What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If it's your first time joining the show, welcome to the show. We got a good one for you today. Like my man Steve Harvey done say, it's Trevor Wallace. Trev Wallace is on the podcast. He's got a special out right now. Go check it out. It's Pterodactyl. If you know how to spell it, you get extra points. Very, very funny dude. Go watch Trevor Wallace's brand new special out and available right now on MSN. Uh, Also, I'm on the road, baby. Uh, Me and Bobby Lee are finishing up the Bad Friends Tour. Uh, This weekend, we're in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in Madison, Wisconsin, those last two dates of this year, then we're done until at the end of January 2024, we go down to Atlantic City, New Jersey. Then we do Temecula and Reno and Tucson, Sacramento. We're all over the place. Long Beach, come see about me and Bobby Lee. Go to badfriendspod.com, badfriendspod.com for those tickets. Enough rambling from me. Let's go to the episode. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger, I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I said that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Trevor Wallace. Hey, that's me. Thanks for having me, dude. Welcome back to NPR with Trevor Wallace. Uh, one of the best looking, funniest dudes I know. I gave you a little bit of beef when we first met because really? I was like, who's this fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. good looking, fucking cool kid? Fuck you this still guy. intimidate me, which is so cool. That and I, I like want that, dude. And I yeah. want, how old are you now? 30. God, dude. So, like, you could kick me in a rib and I might lose that rib forever. You're 30? 30, yeah. And you look fucking good for 30. I'm jealous, dude. But you just showed me your body. You look great for, can I say it out loud? Yeah, no, I'm. You can bleep it. People know. 40. 40. I'm 40. Please, please. Half of the fans at home that watch the show are like, that guy's only 40. He looks 50 <laughs> years old. I hate when people on- online say about me and Bobby, they go, same age, right? And I'm like, no, oh, dude, that guy's 52. Oh, damn. And people are like, you're, you look that old. Oh, I'm like, no. Oh. It just hurts because he dresses like a child, so no one will know the difference. Right. I mean, I like to dress he, younger than my age for sure. This is immature. For a 40-year-old man back home in Chicago. We look like we should flip outfits. 100%. I have that t-shirt in green. Do you? Yeah. It's really great stuff. Yeah. Bobby always looks like he has like a tech deck on him. Like His like outfits. Yeah. Like very, he, he's like, going like, to. He just looks like he would have a fidget toy in his pants, but I love him. Well, we bought him fidget spinners, right? Did you? Middle, yeah, we bought him a bunch to get through some of the episodes because he would start. he'd want to have more dip, and then he was trying to control vaping. We were trying oh. to f- occupy him with stuff that would get him away from... Uh, from distracting himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We distracted him so he wouldn't distract himself. That's crazy. From nicotine to just a fidget spinner. Well, dude, we got him off cigarettes, which was huge. Oh, that is big. That was big. But now he's he's dipping. And I like to pop a couple... Of, couple you zins. like a couple zinny zinnies. Zin it up. See, he won't Zinchino. do that. He likes real hoss. He likes his real... His brother does it. I thought his brother was in like long cut. And I was like, well, who hurt you? Yeah, they're both, they're both into the OG ruin your gums. Now, this being said... Zinnies are Zins aren't great either. They're probably hurting us. But it's clean. It's a clean. It's a cl- it's a quick one too. We'll but the, say that the long cut. It's like just more like clean cleanup. I think. Spit it out. It's gone. Yeah, it's done. But, but like I don't know if it's giving cut. us. Is it giving us uh, oh, jaw? Yeah. yeah, it is. Sometimes yeah. spots of my tongue feel real tender. Oh no. And I don't do it a lot. But it's like you know sometimes you're just like it's just a nice. It's like my nightcap. That's my Merlot, you know? Is a little Zin? Yeah. Little Zinskis, dude. Throw little late in, night Zinners. There's yeah. kids on the internet now. I don't know if you've seen this, but there's guys, because, you know, there's three and six milligrams for Zin. There's other companies that have way more. There's one that's like 20 milligrams. Dude, there's guys on the internet. There's young kids that are doing as many MGs as they can put in their mouth. There's one dude, dude this young college kid, he's putting like hundreds in his mouth. Really? Yeah, it's absurd. It's like what, what, I don't know what the I don't know what the fascination oh, no. is. I used to my neighbor growing up played on the baseball team, and he got me into dipping in like high school because he was the cool guy. So he did it. I wanted to do it. And I put in like he's like you got to do a double decker or upper decker. Upper deckers. Yeah. yeah. Where your where your top of your lip. I did both. Oh, I threw up immediately. Yeah. No. I, in college, I actually started dipping. That's where I kind of started all that stuff because yeah, I used yeah. to smoke. And then I was a um, I was a valet, and you couldn't smoke uh, the valet stand. They they were pretty adamant that's like about the biggest it. Biggest life hack, yeah. And they were like, you gotta, you can't do that. You you can't. And there were no smoke breaks because I ran the my little station. I was just the only guy at, at Buca de Beppo. Shout out, Buca, and, dude. That was the place for our homecoming. Great spot, dude. Oh my god, the great chicken spot. Alfredo, with, and you'd share it, Woo! and the bill was like thirty two dollars. You're like, I got this, honey. Let me take care of this. Yeah, yeah. This is my dad's He's credit card. He's rich. Literally. Yeah. He is rich, rich. Yeah, but that was like fine dining in high school. It was. It was. It was very high end. I used to. And when I valeted there, I couldn't break because I was valet only cat. There? Yeah. So I used to. 
put in a little sneak, a couple of sneakers. But that yeah. was back before. I mean, I think they had pouches, but they were still nic- they were, they weren't nicotine was, pouches. They were something. tobacco pouches, right? Yes, yes. So they were pouches. They were just dip, but pouch form. But mm-hmm. I would do those because I didn't want raw dip like getting in my teeth. Yeah, it's grimy. You can just see, I just like, didn't want it for the customers. I didn't care personally, but I didn't want someone to be oh, like, well, I, I think mean, I saw him. A customer at Bukit Beppo might have all their teeth. Yeah, mm, that's, you know, now that you say that, it was a lot of Buicks. Really? A lot of Buicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that kind of class where we're, we're skating through, do I have money or am I, yeah, am like I really Chrysler struggling? Yeah, the Chrysler 300 type right, level. Right, right. That was am, my favorite. Am I picking up my, my stepkids? That's yeah, kind of what it that's is. That's a great car that's right Buca there. Buca de is, is uh, a broken family restaurant. I wonder when did like, Nissan Altimos become like... Oh, that you might get shot, car. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that. that when did they make that chance? Like know. Nissans are so. <laughs> like every other Nissan is just such a great family car, and then you see a Nissan Altima at late night, and you're like, we should probably not. Yeah, be we on should the get out of here, dude. Yeah. What else is a shady car at night that makes you feel uncomfortable? I tell you, I tell you, you see a Volkswagen Jetta coming, you got to get that is. That is a 23 year old blonde college girl. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's lost? <laughs> Don't help her. She's don't lost, help her, dude. A lot of Zoloft, and she's going through something, and she's speeding. She don't see those speed bumps. No, she got mental speed bumps. Yeah, you know how, <laughs> you know how people, you know how people, uh, when you hear a car come out of a a, a ramp too fast, and you're, like, yes, yeah. Jetta's. I don't think there's one Jetta that's rolling on the road right now that doesn't have a torn up undercarriage from young girls. <laughs> you ever on see those, those videos online? Somebody will post up in one of those infamous driveways and they just watch every person hit their bumper. Yeah, dude, yeah. God, that's like my level of like, <laughs> that's like the DVD sign bouncing off the screen for me. I could watch that all, all day. All day, dude. Scratch God, I've done that. I've done that DVD sign before too. I've done that. Yeah, the, uh, the Jetta. I think the hoping. Jetta comes with Uggs. Like every time you see that door open, it's just a giant <laughs> Ugg slams out. Yeah, the Jettas would scare me at night. Jettas are tough. I don't like Jettas. I never like Jetta. The cars, the cars that bother me the most are... Um, I loathe, loathe uh, Mini Coopers. I think it's the dumbest Dude, you know vehicle ever made. My neighbor has a Mini Cooper and it has the loudest engine ever. Oh, but, yeah. But it, it's like the Sportman or something. Yeah, they, t- they tune them. They but like I'm like, it. why is a Mini Cooper loud? Yeah. Shut, like, it's loud and I open my window and see that? Yeah, a little tiny car. It's like a 5'3 guy grunting at the gym. <laughs> Get it together. I just feel like I looked out the window and saw that and I was like, dude, come, not even a muscle car. Yeah, Mini Cooper's not for me. I don't, I just never, they bothered me so much. Yeah. And my wife wanted to get, or did get one for a short period of time. And she was like, what do you not like about it? I was like, y- if you get hit, you will die. <laughs> That's how I feel about smart cars. There's nothing to that. Why even put an airbag in a smart car? <laughs> Just, die. Gonna, Just yeah, die. Just die. It's going to be like the packing uh, bags they get from Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Those t- the ones that you touch and they fold and exactly. they pop. Yeah, smart uh, cars, I feel that way. Sm- yeah, I just, there's there's certain cars on the road that give me the, uh, what, what do the kids say? They give me the ick. ick. Pontiac is- Aztec. You ever seen one of those bad boys? No, let me see what that, oh, is that the thing that he wrote, drove in Breaking Bad? Don't know. This car has always pissed me off. It looked like the shoe that Kobe came out. By the way, this is the car from Breaking Bad, but Pontiac made the same car as the. This is what? What was the car in Breaking Bad? This wasn't Pontiac. It. It's the exact same. You know how multiple car companies own the rights to the same kind of framework, or they're or they're part of the same production company. That makes sense. What is it? What's the one in Breaking Bad? Just do Breaking Bad car, because now I can't get it out of my head. Uh, It was a. It was an Aztec. Aztec. It was the Aztec. Wow. Who would have thought meth and Pontiacs? Look, it's it's hand in hand, baby. But by the way, when they did that, they were like, this is the lower middle working class teacher's car who's going to yeah. sell meth. And then they wrote that into that show. And now everyone who has one of those feels atrocious. So, yeah, that was it. Yeah, it's like a van sedan type of the sedan, you know? It's, bu- it's a bummer when they put something in a movie or television oh. show that you own. Oh. That must that would hurt my feelings. I've never had that happen. Well, I mean, it's like I see it and I go, well, someone owns that. You know what I mean? Like, that's it's, like, do you remember the Will Ferrell sketch? And he goes, I drive a Dodge Stratus. Remember that? Everybody, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I felt like, dude, every regular dude with a Dodge Stratus was so embarrassed about it. It probably feels it. like when like your name was like Aaron and then Keenan Peel came out, everyone was like, hey, hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. Exactly. And you're like, I didn't ask for this. No, I know. I think so my mean. mom was born. I was like, yo, Keenan Peel. <laughs> Have you seen the girl that lives in the house in Breaking Bad where they throw the pizzas on the house? She like gates it off and she like if you take a photo in front of the house, she yells. I at feel you. bad for that. Yeah, the old bra- the Breaking Bad her. house. I'm no, like, what do you what do you fucking expect? Well, dude, she doesn't need to be bothered every make day her money fucking off life. Of it. Put a QR code out front. Sell a f- <laughs> dude, if she sold pizzas out front of her house, she would make millions of dollars. But people throw the pizza on a roof all the time, right? So now she has <laughs> well, a that's hilarious. That, that is mean, very like, funny. Like like we used to TP houses growing up, but a pizza, uh, I mean, that's a hilarious where thing. Where did you grow up again? Uh, Ventura County, like an hour from here. Oh yeah, that's right. You guys TV houses and shit. Yeah, but you know what's so funny is we we didn't do it often. We would 
We stole shit more. Really? I, I, yeah. We steal hubcaps, the, the chrome Chromies. Ones. Yeah, and we'd put them on our bike. I like that. We, I, we did that. Yeah, dude, we did that. It was like the coolest you feeling. You catch ever. yourself a BMW Chromie, man. You're the coolest cat oh, in town. Oh, somebody had like man. bullet ones, and uh-huh. you're like, dude, this on my Schwinn? So hard. Holy fuck. I might put a baseball car in there. Vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> that was really the, that was the biggest thing. My TPing, dad would get pissed. Huh? You TP'd yeah, a lot? Get, yeah, I don't know why. Do we TP this kid's house? And I feel bad about this now. A lot, a lot of this is like post-child regret where you're like, why did I do this? Mm-hmm. But we TP this kid's house so much they cut the tree down. And then he posted on Facebook like, to everybody who cut to TP our tree, we cut it down. That was the last thing our grandpa left us. And I was like, oh, fuck. A tree? <laughs> <laughs> fuck that grandpa, dude. That's a dickhead move. Dude, be a real grandpa. Leave me a trust. You know, leave me some cheddar, not a tree. Yeah, wrong type of paper, grandpa. Come on, dude. Broke-ass grandpa. Yeah, but like we, seeing that we on didn't Facebook. Do that. We didn't do that. Uh, and we were doing double ply. We, yeah, we didn't really no do need. I did we did it maybe I think we did it for like homecoming or something like that. Like yeah, that yeah. would happen. Egging was a thing in high school for me. Yeah, we never did egging. Loved talking a good egg at a house. <laughs> but it's hilarious. Nothing like it. And then forking someone's yard. Forking. I tried to t- explain it to someone else. They didn't get it. But like we put it in and you snap it. Well, yeah, but it's also because in the Midwest you do it when it's cold. So the when the grass kind of gets really hard and freezes over, oh. it's fucking awful. It's like the meanest thing you can do, man. You fork and break. You did that in Minnesota, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that's a dickhead move. Out here, it really wouldn't work as well because the ground doesn't freeze. Everybody has AstroTurf. They don't cut their own lawn. They don't know what the fuck's it's going on. It's fake grass. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You grew I like. You know what's so funny? I never knew. there. W- I never had a neighbor in the Midwest that had fake grass. That didn't exist. Mm-hmm. And then I moved out here, and it like slowly but surely hit me that so ma- ev- almost everyone that lives around me has fake grass. Yeah, and they say it because like, to conserve water, you're just lazy. No, dude. Turf. I like grass, my guy. Give me grass, you nice. know? Yeah, fuck the... And what do you think a dog feels like when he's got a shit on plastic? Nah, what dude, give it? him grass. Yeah, yeah, my dog wants to roll around and put her face in the grass and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, cut I, your own lawn? I do. You do? I do, yeah, I do. I do. Really? I trim it, I cut it, uh, I leaf blow the leaves you think out. after like one or two specials, you'd be like, we're done here. Nah, fuck that, dude. No, really? I do all that stuff. I wash my car. I wash my own car. But washing the car, I could get behind. That's like a, that's like a man thing. I like, enjoy I it. I want to get in the fucking Because smokes. it feels like I'm... Sub- I don't know. It's like a but little you, bit of pride in it. You have a great car. Yeah. Nissan Altima. I, I love, yeah, nice and... Nissan Altima. <laughs> but I do like to wash it, right? I, I don't know what it is. I just, I enjoy. And Actually, I do know. When you like wave at them when you're washing it. You know, my neighbor, dude, every t- single time. Like, I'm the only guy that washes. No, my one of my neighbors washes his car too, but all the other neighbors, when they see me washing my car, same fucking joke. When you're done over there, oh, you want to fucking up, 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 up. Me know, next. And I, and I said that my up. one neighbor was really funny. He says, she was washing their car, his wife. Good. And I said, I saw, I saw her out earlier today. I see who wears the pants in the house, and he was like, uh, "Was uh, he was like annoyed, uh, was stunned, business call. mad about it?" Yeah. I was like, "I'm just playing, man." And he was like, oh, okay. And he just drove away. I was like, "Oh no, dude!" He's drove into a barranca. Yeah. He's like, "I should created a fight it. with this guy and his wife for no reason." I just like it because it's um, put in headphones, and I think it calms me down. It's therapeutic. It's c- quiet and slow. There's yeah, not, yeah, there's yeah. no rush. I'm never doing it when I don't have a ton of time. I right. only do it when I'm like, oh, yes. I can kill the afternoon doing this, listening to, you know, a new album or something, and then just kind of disappear. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of rad. That's what I do with dishes. I let them load up all week, maybe two weeks, <laughs> and then yeah. I put on a podcast, Whiskey Ginger, of course. Of course. My first episode. Of hey, part one. Or part Stiff two. Socks. Stiff Socks. Good pod, Stiff Thank Socks. Thank you so much, dude. And uh, then I just like crank it out at once. But it feels like therapeutic. I don't like every single time you want me to get in there, wash it, load it. Like, you I don't, know that's so you normal. don't do dishwasher? You hand wash? No, I do, but like I like rinse it off and then like get like the like oatmeal off the bowl, a little bit of ketchup. But so there. you let it pile up in the sink though? Yeah. You don't just whoosh and right in the dishwasher. Mm. You're one of these people. It's so fascinating to me. Put it right in the dishwasher. It's right there. <laughs> you would think. Yeah, you sound, I sound like you're my wife right now. Like she'll open a box from Amazon and then just leave it. And I'm like, empty it out. Yeah, she yeah. like looks what it is and then puts it in the laundry room. And I'm like, get that's, the stuff out. Yeah, that's me to a T. You do that. I huh? just leave it somewhere. And then I do like a big cleanup on the Sunday. Yeah, see, I don't like, I say, because I don't, the anxiety of it building up creeps me out. I want it all. Just take really? care of it when you're doing it. For some reason, I think the more messy, the more like creative. Ah, so I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I got to get back to this TikTok edit, and then I just leave a box or yeah. like leave a plate out. I guess that might be true. Dave Chappelle lives in a house of filth. That's Have you what, seen it? No, no, I'm kidding. No, no, dude. No, I don't think the he, messier the more Ohio. creative. There's really no know. chance. There's. I think, I think the, the people assume that you're a a more of a creative person if you're if you're kind of unhinged and weird. But yeah, at some point, uh, you want to feel. Um, you can really go one of both ways. Because you ever seen the show about hoarders? Yeah. Those motherfuckers aren't creative. The they're only all, ways they're yeah, creative none is of those how they put comics. shit in their house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, this guy's can't write a type he's trying to find out if Chappelle has a Dave dirty Chappelle's house. house. Did you have video on it? 
No, Why is there a Q and A? That's what crazy. Is this? It's creepy. It's creepy. McCone, stop looking up. Just cut it out, will you? This guy, what a lunatic. Oh, that's his house. Yeah, I'm that's... sure that's one of his homes. Yeah, Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, before we get too far, uh, ladies and gentlemen that are out there in the world of of podcasting uh, and stand up comedy, if you're a fan, you need to go watch this gentleman's new special that's out and available right now. Out now. Uh, on Emma, it's on Amazon. 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 Prime. I saw on Amazon Prime. I saw a billboard for it across the street from the Improv last night. I went to the party. And I was like, oh, that's fucking rad. But that, yeah. that was what? Not them. That was Amazon doing that? That was Amazon putting it up. That's very nice. Yeah, that was great. They were like, you have a billboard. And then they just tagged this construction site. But it's like five different of my faces. And it's right on Melrose. Which oh, that's is like cool. Prime location. Oh, it's the best. I think it's honestly better than uh, just like one high up billboard. It's just like, it feels right. It's street level. Yeah. And there's like five of it. It yeah, feels I like, like it. more like modern day version. What's the like, special called again? Pterodactyl. 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 What a word. What a, I think a, it just sticks. It does. Well, I know it. I know it now because I feel like it's like I want like a special that's just like uh, you just you either know the name or of the the comic or they're either gonna type in Trevor Wall special or they're gonna be like some dinosaur some shit. I like you that. Know? Do and you have a big wraparound joke about pterodactyls? I in do, it? and then yeah. I kind of tag it a few times just like as a callback in there. And I just thought it was like a, like I love how Tom Segura's were just sledgehammers, just like boom. It's just like just one word, powerful word. Well, that's because he's a big Phil Collins fan. That's why, yeah, that's why he named it that. I know people think it's something else. It's not. He just really loved the song Sledgehammer. Do you know that song? I do. I know that in the air tonight. Right over your head, uh, yeah. Have you ever seen the live one in the air tonight on Come YouTube? On, dude. Holy yeah. fuck! I've jerked off. You ever? <laughs> I've jerked off. Watch that at four a.m. Dude, that'll get your nipples erect. <laughs> I love Phil Collins, dude. He there's nobody who like. He owns it. He embodies Peter it. Peter Gabriel. I'm so sorry. That's who did Sledgehammer. That's right. Mm. Peter Gabriel. Why does he feel like Phil Collins to me? There's P. Peter Gabriel. Something similar names. about it, dude. Don't do that. Don't play that song, dude. Don't play that song. Don't get me amped up in this room right now. I'll lose my fucking no, mind. No, Blueface. I don't know about that. Yeah, no. Blueface was okay back That's then. That's tough. You could still do That's it. That's tough. I don't know about that. No, you could still do it, man. Trolls Avatars, weren't... Smurfs. Yeah, no, Smurfs didn't have rights back then. They didn't. And, and Smurfs Lives Matter, I want to say that right now. As I know it's controversial as it it's may seem. There. But I do feel like I should take a stand. Thank you for taking us. No, but, nobody but, will say that. But, do, but go watch people at some point. Please go watch at the end of this episode or pause it and go watch it and come back and go watch Pterodactyl on Amazon. You're a great comic. And, you can, and honestly, I mean that because... Um, when me and Bob did a show and, and you popped and did oh, some time right. with us, and I thought that was, it's cool to see, it's been cool to see kind of your ascension. Not to say like, I've been watching you, and, but yeah. I have seen, you have really like in the last couple of years, it's it's been cool to watch you kind of rise, grow and expand. Yeah, uh, You and fucking, and, uh, and wow. Blaustein. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's wild to watch him grow into that too because i met that guy 15 years ago i mean sure you know I'm the story punked, we, yeah, yeah. We, yeah we're so, watching that recently it's wild man and it's not it's not it's great to see that and i'm glad like we're getting to do our own thing and not to harp on it too much we'll get back to fun stuff but um it's cool and to see uh, alternative like amazon because netflix was like the bully and now people are like okay i'll just do my own thing now yeah and I'll go a different way, or I'll self-produce, or I'll put it out on a different platform. And Bargazzi being on Amazon, and yeah, I think jam, all I think Bargazzi. all of that is cool. That it's we're shifting the game. It's not yeah. just like you got to do it like this because it yeah, used yeah. to be just like whatever you guys want us to do, man. Right. And, and that's kind of how Amazon uh, was like the opposite. They were great about it. They're like, look, we want to promote just as much as you do. Yeah. And they were like, here's what we're gonna promote on your side. Here's what you can do on your side. Like it felt very uh, collaborative. Versus, I feel like. Um, and Netflix, I mean, also a great company, and so many of my friends have specials over there. Hey, hey, hey. cheeseburger. But Go it, watch. But it felt like, um, and I don't know how your deal was structured, but it like, it felt like they're like, all right, go shoot it, give it to us, and you do the rest. I don't, I don't know. I'm. Yeah, for me it was uh, for me it was I wanted to own it, so I I was either going to self distribute it somehow or something. Yeah. I didn't really know. So when when I talked to Netflix, I had said I do want to own all the material, and I, I want it to be me, and I don't want like you to tell me. I don't want any. So I want to do all of it myself. Yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. pick it. I want to. I the the only thing I wanted them to tell me what they needed was uh, ratios for 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 video. Oh. Yeah. Right, the, right, right, yeah. the only requirements I wanted from them were mm -hmm. like, tell me how, tell me the ratios that the edit needs to be in, and tell me like where the fucking watermarks need to be and all that stuff for. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Because outside of that, I said I wanted to do. I didn't want any suggestions. Yeah. And what's great about this special is I own it after three years. So it's pretty much the same deal. That it's yours. It, yeah. Then I get it back. That's fucking rad. And I get man. to just throw it up on Snapchat premium, wherever the fuck I want to put it after. Are you on Are you on Snapchat still? Because people are on it making yeah. money. 
I'm yeah. not making money like that, but like I still have it. Like I know people that post like they post a hundred times a day, like a photo, and wow. then the last photo is like of a chick's ass because mm-hmm. that's like the thumbnail of the story. Smart, and it just yeah, it's very smart. Yeah. I mean, I I wish I knew that many chicks with a good ass or that many chicks in general. <laughs> I'm just DMing the same girl. Can we do that weekly ass? Send your please. butt again, please. Yeah, I'll Photoshop myself in there. We're at a Mets game. Um, but <laughs> it, yeah, that that seems like the most soul sucking version of making money. You're just because they post, it would just be like if I did this podcast today, it would be every single inch of this. And I was like, I also feel like I would dox myself without even knowing it. Like, yeah, on accident. You know, I'd be like, oh, this Chipotle is crazy, and everyone's like, this is the Chipotle off Ventura Boulevard, isn't it? And you're like, oh fuck, dude, I don't. And, and you're like, it is. Yeah. And do then, you want to hang? Yeah. And then they come to beat my ass. I'm taking photos of them. Hold on. Do you have a nice ass, sir? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. I don't like any of that stuff. Like, I don't. It's a little too invasive, too close to home. Yeah. It's I like think like you're very good about that. You're like, your 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 personal life is your personal life, and, and yeah. your career is your career. I try. I mean, I'm also just not good at social media. I don't. Oh, that's I, funny. I, it's I thought you were like very secretive. You're like, I just don't fucking know. I don't. No, really I just know. don't. I just don't. I just don't care enough about social media. I, I like. I I try to give a fuck and. Yeah. Then every time I do, I overthink it, and then I'm oh, like, "Fuck this, never mind." I do this and that, and by, and bad friends. So I feel like that's my that this is my posting on Instagram or yeah. w- w- whatever. Whatever the story that, post of the week, you'll just talk about it here instead. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah, yeah might as well. Shit. Like the story that I would have shared with them was with the thing I told you before. Like I just got back from the doctor, and they tell me my cholesterol's too high. Now I got to be on medication. What are they like, giving you? Um, I don't know the name of it. I'm sure. I'm sure it's funny. What cholesterol medication names are always funny. Do no, cholesterol all medications? Of them do. They're, well, because they, I think they partially want to make you feel bad about. Let's see, Lipitor. I mean, it just sounds. Yeah, all like these a, sound like they get my cock hard. That's right, Lipitor. Or a Harry Let's Potter call. spell. Alta Prev. Laval. Did, did you know your cholesterol was high? I mean, I could feel my. Sometimes I can hear my heart go ow, and then I'm like, all right, no, it's that's probably, great. That's great. Yeah, no, I think I knew my cholesterol was high because the level of stress and stuff caused from the pain from this injury I had. So I've been running higher than normal, but I imagine too. Well, I'm not restricting car, my diet as much as I used to. Really? Yeah. I oh God, I never restrict it. And well, I feel you like you fucking you don't. Yeah, you're good but now. In the future. Yeah, now. Yeah. But Ten now. years, you're fucked. <sighs> Do you eat fast food? I ate in and out like last night. I mean, yeah. that's like my level of fast food. Yeah, that is literally fast food. It's not your level. That's everyone's level. Of fast food. <laughs> yeah, but in my head, it's, it's it's like shopping at Trader Joe's. It seems healthy in your head, but there's still really shitty food. So, well, there's so much shitty food. In fact, I think yeah. I would argue Trader Joe's percentage wise has more bad shit than good shit for you that's very true they're fucking dessert uh the frozen the frozen whole de- row it's all bad shit it's yeah. all terrible shit for but you. in my head trader joe's is like oh health same thing with whole food yeah they've so done in that. and out to me i'm like oh they fry the fries in peanut oil we're good yeah but you're like but it's fried it just doesn't fucking matter. yeah they believe they believe in jesus over there we're good <laughs> they got quotes on the bottom of the cup yeah john 316 God bless, dude. That's why Chick Fil A is closed on Sunday to pray for the gays. You know, that's what they say <laughs> right in their cup. We're praying for gays. That's We're closed I, exactly. to pray for the gays. I know I, that is t- still phenomenal to me that a business is so successful, uh, and they're closed on a day where everybody but would go kn- get them. Dude, you know the day that they reopen on Sundays, it's going to be massive. See, I, I don't know. I think this is the. I think this is their calling card. Is like, well, imagine McDonald's got bullying into doing like breakfast, like past the normal hours. Do they do it all day? I don't think so. It is all day now. right? Why is it fucking always beeping in there all day? Beep, 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 Something's beep, going beep, off. But like, but but uh, all the time. Yeah. Even on a slow shift. You know what that is? That's the fry cooker telling you it's done. You got to pull it up, and they got to hit the button to stop. It used to work at McDonald's. My Did dude. you really? Oh, yeah. Wow, you gave me the full ass answer. That's the fry. That's. But that sounds the, like a plane's the landing. The fry in cook that bitch. has a timer. Yeah, and they fu- you're supposed to turn it off. Don't those beeps drive you insane so you went mcdonald's to buka de beppo that's kind of a glow up no that was mcdonald's when i was 15 buka de beppo was in college when i was valeting yeah but i worked a thousand jobs in between that did you have a bunch of shitty day jobs oh yeah 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 i uh, used to i used to work in a kiosk inside of a costco in college oh wow window coverings it was uh yeah like like blinds and shit could you sell no I you weren't good at it. Because what would happen is I was a middleman. I would get like a dad who was just shopping out there for some Michelobes, would stop by and we'd see all the blind shit. And he would be like, how much for that? And I'd be like, oh, well, we can just schedule you an appointment. I was a middleman. I would mm. get their contact. What a waste. Oh, terrible. <laughs> but then the dads would always be like, well, I'll tell you the dimensions right now. It's nine by 16. And I want that right there. I was like, sir, I don't know. I just worked. I was in college. I was like hungover. I'd be like, sir, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I used to write stand up while I was just there. But the guys would yell at me and be like, "How do you not know much? It's cost." I was like, "I don't work. For, I'm just a. I'm just a guy." This company failed. Yes, probably. There's no chance that's still around. What uh, a weird system. Do you want this product? I do. Well, I'm going to schedule you to talk to somebody else yeah. to get this product. Yeah, because once they're in your home, you're not going to not. 
you know? Yeah, but it's also impossible. What a, one but more step they don't need doesn't I remember make sense. My best day was when we, so it was a bunch of me and my frat uh, guys that worked there. Fraternity. Fraternity. Sorry. I don't didn't call that. your fraternity don't a frat. You don't troll your country a cunt. <laughs> That's what they used to say all the time. You see here guys <laughs> say that on that, camera. Yeah. You don't call your country a cunt. God. Don't it's call your fraternity, fraternity a, frat. Not a frat. What fraternity were you in again? Delta Upsilon. Woo woo! That's the Jewish one. I'm just kidding. It's I not was. The, it's, not it, the so it could be. it's not the Jewish. It's not the Jewish one. Which one? Were you in one? No, dude. They wouldn't. No? Uh, no chance. Look at me, dude. They wouldn't let me in. Yeah, but they seem. You seem like an undercard. And I mean that respectfully. No, you know what it is? I have a huge issue with authority and rules. So I just don't like, I wouldn't have, the process. Dude, there was a few guys at like week one of like pledging. They were like, no. No. Like, clean this house. They're like, no, that's this is me. bullshit. Nope. I just want women and chicks. Get this pledge out of here. Yeah, no, I was no. That, that's just, I, you would have never convinced me to do the thing to be a part of the machine. Fuck that. Oh, right. That was my issue. It was like, I'm not doing that just to join. But do you want to be friends with us? It's like, I'll be friends with you guys outside of the fraternity. You just don't want a brotherhood? Yeah. I mean, you can but be you my homie. you have to do the elephant walk with us. That's no, where you, I uh, don't. Put a thumb in another man's ass. Did you do walk. that? No, no, no. Come on, dude. I did it. Yeah. You did, dude. Yeah, that was off campus. Yeah. That was just boys being boys. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a good friend's giving, if you know what I mean. It's just heading to Del Taco, dude. Plug yeah. it in. <laughs> no, I couldn't do it because I didn't have the I didn't have the discipline to want to listen to other I uh, uh, I get uh, similar aged men telling me what to do is yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If it, if they you know what they should do just bring in an older guy to bully you around, and that I would have listened to that guy because this guy was like twenty two, but he had a beard. I mean, that's impressive for me. I, I still can't. Yeah, the, you still can't get one. It's it looks like a GameStop employee. Like it's not good. <laughs> like it's like patchy. Like 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 I really went for it during the pandemic for like a month, and it just didn't. And I never uh, like the response people give me. They'd be like, "Oh, you're you're really going for it," and you're like, "Fucking no, that's either you have it or you don't." Yeah, Adam Devine showed up last night to to the thing uh, to the event. Big name drop. He's got uh, yeah, he's got a new mustache on his face, and and it looks actually pretty good. You know I the cool part about this town? What were you saying? No, I said I, I didn't see him as a mustache guy. Yeah. But now that he, I saw, I was like pretty impressed. I was like, that's uh. I was a little shocked that it looked so good. There it is. Here, like, oh, zoom, in. Yeah, zoom he, in on the photo. He's got a mustache face. He's got a little like ha ha to him, you know. That's what he said. He's like, he's like really? a French detective. Yeah, he does have a little bit of Pink Panther. Yeah, you know what I like about this town is you can do anything you want and be like, oh, it's for a role. Mm -hmm. Like you can look like shit. Oh, I got this movie coming up, and then that movie just never comes up. You could do that with anything. Rob, you, when you fucking rob somebody, be like, this is for a role, bud. I'm yeah, character development. Holy shit. Yeah, this guy. This is for a role. That you're do the people. In, Camera know what that looks like? Yeah, people people do know by now that Makona shaved his head to match Carlos on Bad Friends. Yeah. Oh, that's good. It's kind of fun. He committed to the bit. <sighs> wow. Committed to the bit. Have you done anything like this? Have you ever committed to the bit? Commit to the bit. Because you do, uh, like, look, dude, all, of all the stuff that you've done, I mean, you've, you've created so much funny content on the internet in terms of, like, videos and sketches. Thank you, man. Have you gone overboard and committed to the bit with committed something like that? Committed to the bit. Um, like my when, version of that is uh, I like bleached my hair with eight dollar Target bleach, and my mom did it for me like four years ago. Rad mom, yeah, great mom. I was in between apartments, and then I lived home for a month, and she bleached my hair, and it looked terrible. I've never had worse comments in my life. It's like, use toner, you fucking idiot. It looks like a cat peed on your head. Yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> and I, Trevor Wallace bleached hair. Yeah, I I, and see. I kind of yeah. So in the White Claw video, like one of my most like big videos, I had this like bleached hair. It just looked like I have a very douchey, punchable face, but like this really up the ante. Like wow. that is like you see that guy at a Kmart, you just know he's stealing whippets. I hate that guy. Yeah, not good. But yeah. I but I, I like you like this so much more. Oh yeah, I did it for like the bit. I was like, I wanted to do it for a video. Deep down, I was like, I want to know. And Blau's got bleached hair too, so he's going through the same thing. But I he like, looks like he should have bleached hair. For some, I don't know what it is. It looks like it's supposed to be that way. It with fits. Him. I yeah, think if you have dark hair it. underneath, it does work. But I feel like bleaching your hair is like a girl's version of getting bangs. Like you're going through something. You don't know what it is, but you, you're That's not daddy issues. Yeah, there's something in but life. For you, it's mommy issues. That's mommy all that issues, is. Because yeah. who did it? My who mommy, dyed your hair? Yeah, exactly. Mommy did it for me. So what? You move back home, and then you move back. Now you're living alone again, right? Live alone again. Good yeah, for you. Out dude. here in the valley, just me and my cat, dude. Woo! Lonely. What's the pussy's name? Pluto. Oh, right on. After, Pluto's after puss. Pluto the dog or Pluto the planet? You know, I was don't Pluto like Pluto not a planet. Yeah, we denounced it, right? Wow. It got canceled. Pluto as a planet got canceled. I feel that, though. You know, 2015 came around, and they're like, we're done with you. Yeah, they did. They shuffled it right off into fucking Yeah, I space. just feel bad for Pluto, the actual planet. Like, what does he know? Oh, it's also a dwarf planet. I don't whoa, know if we whoa, can even whoa, say whoa. that. Whoa, whoa, Careful with that kind of language. Dude. Well, that's what it says on Google. It's I don't an, know if we can say LP that. It's an LP planet. Little planet. Little planet. Yeah, it's an LP. Little ah, planet. fuck. My bad. In dude. the Kuiper Belt, a ring of the bodies beyond the orbit of dude. Neptune, it's the ninth largest 
and 10th most massive known object to directly orbit the sun. So, dude, this guy's buffed up. He's jacking around the sun, and they still won't recognize him. And he got discovered in 1930. My man's coming up on 100 years. He's a 90-year-old man, and we're like, dude, you're not fucking real. And he's like, what? That's so fucked up, dude. dude imagine telling a guy with dementia, you're not real. <laughs> then you have to tell him every five minutes. But think about that. It's also kind of cool that he's not a planet because he's also a massive star. Like, if he's a star in the solar system, he's one of the biggest stars. Right. You know? But every like, he's like Johnny Manziel in the CFL. Superstar. 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 NFL, they're like, yeah, you know, like jo Pluto is the Johnny Manziel of the planet. That's He's a so great good. guy. He should be nicknamed Pluto, Johnny yes. Manziel. He went up to the league. And they were I, like, I love Johnny Manziel. Like, in college, I think I dressed up as him for Halloween one year. He was like my guy. I was he, was, he was your dude, huh? Dude, when you were, I was in college the same time he was playing. We'd watch AM games. Our school had a football team. They sucked. Wait, what school? San Jose State. Oh. We were D1. We were like the Mountain West. We like play like a fucking like a good youth league or something. Right. But we would get up early and watch AM games. Like, we, Johnny Manziel was like the guy. He really was, dude. That guy Being was in just... college at the same time as him, like, I felt like this weird connection. Well, that's well, the same thing. Was you grow up with athletes, you feel like you. Like yeah. it's crazy, creepy to me to think that LeBron and I are the same age. That's oh. weird as shit because I yeah. like grew, grew watching him, and yeah. now I'm like, but we're we're the same age. It's super weird. In my mind, I always thought he was much much older than me, but he's right. not. With us, it's like, why would I think that we graduated the same? Year? Holy shit! It's creepy to think that as you get older, especially because now if I uh, there's pro athletes that I know and they're buddies. but he also has bad cholesterol. Uh, no, no, mm -hmm. dude, we just got it checked. LeBron Damn. is all good. He's His lipids about... were high for some reason, oh. but I don't. I don't even know what that means. He'll sneak up on you. It could be HGH or the T. You're not taking the T. You don't need any of that stuff. I take a lot of it. You do testosterone. Awesome. No, uh, in, I don't know why this is all about college, but in college I did a. Uh, my friend did steroids. I did one shot of steroids one day. In your ass? Uh no, left bicep. I should have done it. Aren't ass. you supposed to put it in your butt? Isn't that the whole thing? I think get... so. Yeah, but you have to have somebody else do it, in like a Gold's Gym. You know, they say you have to have somebody else put it in your ass, but you can put it in your ass yourself. What if you miss? And uh, somebody's going to clip that, what I just said. And that's <laughs> I have had to put a suppository in. What? What for? I have a really bad colon. Like, I have a, this thing called ulcerative colitis. Ladies, you turned on yet? Ladies! I have a bad colon, and they didn't know what it was. And to get to your colon, it's like the, mo it's like, it's like the spot under your car seat where the french fries go even deeper. You can't, like, get to it. <laughs> so you either have to shoot something up your ass or put something down your throat. And I was like, look, the male G-spot's in the ass. Let me go up there. So for like a month straight, I would, every night, my roommates never knew this when I lived in, uh, when I first moved to LA, I had to every night put a suppository up my ass. And I was like, imagine walking in on your roommate, and I'm just like spread eagle, just sitting there like, yeah, I paid my rent. <laughs> oh. Every night I had to do it. And then in the morning, Sorry I Sorry to interrupt, Trevor, out. but uh, we got to split up the cable bill. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Trying to watch Animal Plant? Oh, what the fuck? Do you need help, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Were you moaning? Oh. So you put it up for how many years? Uh, I did it for a month straight. And then you, but Every you night. could have taken it orally, right? No, because this was a time where, the, like, they needed this like medicine to be in like my colon, so I had to like shoot it up my ass. Up. It's like a very weird time in my life. I, so now the colon's fine because now they found the medicine that I can just take orally to make it good. What's that one called? Mirkeptopurine. Mirkeptopurine. Shout out to Mirkeptopurine yeah. and all of the good it does. See, look, dude, I'm on meds. You're on meds. We're doing it, dude. That's We're med boys. Is. Med but everybody boys. walks past us on the street like, wow, their life must be so perfect. I'm putting shit up my ass nightly. <laughs> <laughs> med men. We should run our own med men where it's just you and I talking about the medication that we're currently taking. That would be great. People are like, is there weed here? You're like, no, dude. My boy's going to show you how he puts stuff in his butt. Yeah, but bend help over. Colon. You'll be healthy. Your colon will be good. Are you a weed guy? Do you smoke weed? Kind of, sometimes. I smoked recently a bunch. I just hate the next day uh, feeling a little off. You do. You feel off. It does affect you. Just a little, like, like yeah. I feel like no matter how much coffee I have or even if I work out, I hit that, like, ceiling in the, in the morning where it's just, like, there's, like, haze. Do you feel that or no? No, man. Honestly, I don't. I, I, I feel that way. Uh, I feel that way when I get high. <laughs> That's how I, not the next high, day. Like, the next it. day, I'm, I'm usually pretty good. Um, w booze is pr probably the, you know, booze the next day. Even if I'm not like drinking heavily, even if I have a couple, I still feel blech from booze. The really? thing that makes me feel the worst the next day is NyQuil, dude. Yes. NyQuil. If I, just... I, I feel like shit for like like the first six hours of the day. Yeah, you feel like your brain is on like subtitle mode. It sucks. It's like slightly delayed. Yeah, you know what depersonalization syndrome is? You know what that is? Where uh -uh. you're like disconnected oh, from yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's how I feel. I feel depersonalized where I'm like- Yeah, like, I hate that shit. Drowsiness and all that also, stuff. Also, the dreams you have on like NyQuil, insane. Getting around yeah. eating by a gargoyle or something. Doxlamine, yeah. That stuff, it, it lasts forever. Yes. And I think sometimes it, uh, I think sometimes, like anything, you know how when you take an edible and they're like, each of these should be like three or five grams or whatever, and you're, and you know what I mean? Like- 
if it's a homemade, if it's not, yeah. you know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. You don't know how much is in each one of those. You're like, no we're idea. guessing. It's the same thing no with NyQuil. I don't even NyQuil. use the cap on NyQuil. I just sip it out of the bottle. Same. That and cap like, thing gets thrown away right when you <laughs> exactly, open it up. Exactly, because it's messy. Yeah. And I don't do the dishes. <laughs> That's right. We all know this. I gotta wait till Sunday to take it. But yeah, just do a bit like, all right, this feels about right. Glug, glug, glug. And then the next morning, I feel like shit. I hate it. I, I, I did it recently because I couldn't get to sleep because uh, I was having bat- leg pain. So I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to try. I woke up to yeah, piss. You are 40. Dude, 100%. I woke up to piss like twice and then I shoved when does that, that. When does that start? Waking up to I piss? Yeah, I don't Late either. 30s, like 36, 37. Okay, I got a couple You'll wake up to it. piss, yeah. I don't have that yet, and thank God. Well, the trick is not drinking water after a certain hour of the night. My God, this is old shit, dude. Do you leak at all? We talked about this on Bad Friends, too. Uh, after you in, piss, you ever shake and then yeah, leak a little bit? Yeah, of course. That's, dude, it gets, hey, it gets worse. Really? Yeah, dude, you'll start flooding your jeans, my dude. No Just, way, dude. Sh- I, was, uh, I was wearing boxes the other day. For, I forget what, why, but like I... Like pants similar to these on, and you could just see a hole, a spot, a little pea spot right <laughs> yeah. there. Oh, that's a little aggressive where my dick goes. I was but just was, gonna say, dude, go a little here. higher. Yeah, it was kind of by uh, you know my yeah. ankle up here, but yeah, it was a full blown. Like, that's a pea spot. I, yeah, it yeah. sucks. Speaking it of pee, can I go to the bathroom real quick? Nope. All right, cool. So, anyways, Let Bad Friends go. today is brought to you by Levitra. In here, we pour whiskey. whiskey. Hey, are you somebody that has something to sell, showcase, talk about, show off? Even Squarespace is the place to create your very own unique, beautiful site. Uh, Whether you're someone like me who's a comedian who puts updates all the time on their website or you're someone who just likes to show off their unbelievable talent at the hang drum that you play near a nice flowy river near your house. Whatever you're you're showcasing, Squarespace is the place to build an incredible site. Uh, Over the years, sites have looked so much stronger and better and they're user generated now they used to be have to be built out by some genius that you overpaid a ton of money who knew about ones and zeros and now you can do it by yourself and now with squarespace they have all these great um, inserts for you to get more analytical data uh, more uh, access to both the people that are clicking on your site and also to interact with them. You know, if you have custom merch, you can easily sell custom merch on there, passive income stream that engages, scales your brand. The uh, the online store uh, that they have set up for you, so easy. Flexible website templates that anybody can use, even a dumb dumb like me. Email campaigns, which are very huge. You know, you can collect email subscribers on your site, build connections for repeat business. And my favorite is the analytics. I've said this every time, but I do love it. You can use these insights uh, to grow your business and learn where your site visits and sales are coming from. That way you can analyze which channels are the most effective and where you can go. For me, I want to know where you guys are at. What city are you in that you're clicking on my website so I can come see you? Uh, it's incredible. If you've never tried Squarespace, what are you waiting for? Get your site up and running. Uh, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Once again, squarespace.com. Check it out when you're ready to launch after that free trial. Go to squarespace.com slash whiskey to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole Distillery and their one-of-a-kind Kentucky bourbon and rye whiskeys. This is the Boxer Grail. This is what I've been sip-sapping on. Uh, this is their straight rye whiskey, and boy, oh boy, is it good. Never thought I'd be a rye guy, but I guess I am. This stuff is so delicious. They have four different expressions uh, over there, but I got to tell you, I'm sip-sapping on Boxer Grail. Um, and if you've never tried this, it's got uh, this beautiful punch of rye grain that's uh, got a nice bright citrus end to it. It's nice and clean, floral notes. You can see right through it how uh, smooth this stuff is. There's no there's no nastiness in this sauce. You're not going to find any sidewinders uh, in here. Just pure, beautiful rye whiskey. I like it so much. They've also got the high, uh, the high, high gold, high rye, double malt bourbon, uh, the Cave Hill Four Grain. That's their OG and the Derringer, which is finished in PX Sherry casks. Shout out to Rabbit Hole for making a quality product. Behind them, of course, is their founder, Kaveh Zamanian. This dude left a 20-plus successful uh, year career uh, to go down the rabbit hole with a mission to create the world's finest spirits, and that he did. He created some really good stuff. He was just inducted into the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame, the fastest to ever get inducted. Congratulations. Cheers to you, my friend. They're small batch, and a lot of people say they are, but these guys are 15 barrels or less. That is very small batch. So quality is right here because they're not pushing out a ton of quantity for no reason. It's all about quality. Uh, If you never tried it, you must, you must, you must. They're available all over the place. Go to rabbitholedistillery.com. You can search their website to find out where they're being sold. And when you're ready to have a sip of the good sauce, go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. Use the promo code rabbit for $5 off your first order. Rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. Promo code is rabbit for five bucks off your first order. Have fun. Drink responsibly. Ginger. I like gingers. Look at I just got sent your uh 
You're special. Really? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I dude. I think your press, your one of your. Uh, oh yeah, the PR, the PR, the PR, the PR person. They sent it to me. It's so funny. It's Thank- funny when you know the person. You're like, what? What do you mean? It's like this is Trevor Walls. Here's the things you can. Well, talk no, about. it's right. Well, here's just jump off. Well, because points. here's the deal, dude. You have to, you have to self promote. Yeah. You know, I, I I think I've talked about it on this stupid show, but I saw a great interview from uh, Duplass, and he he was talking about. I think it was a commencement speech, and he was talking about when you make something in this business, you th- you think that uh, or they tell you like, hey man, you make something, you work really hard, and you do good, the cavalry will, will come calling, and you're like, all right, and you make this thing, and you mm-hmm. put it out, and you put all this effort into it, and you're like, come on man, I like I'm I'm, I'm doing it, like I need help, yeah. And then once it comes out, you're like, all right, Calvary's going to come. You know what I mean? Meaning like, yeah. it's a, we're, this is it, dude. And it doesn't come. And then you do another thing and you do all the self-generated thing. And then you're like, all right, Calvary's coming though, right? They're going to mm-hmm. fucking call me. And and then he goes, then you you work tirelessly until you reach a point in your career when you realize the Calvary isn't coming and it never was going to fucking come. You had to self-generate all this stuff no matter what. Uh, so you have to do all of this work. Other people yeah. around you are great to help you. But at the end of the day, I think people don't really know in our business, particularly, like, if you don't go do it, it ain't happening. Right. It just is not happening. I know people are like, they're plugged into the system or, the you know, like, you hear these rumors when somebody says, like, the business wants him to make it. It's like, that's not a real thing. Right. That that doesn't, in- it's either that person has incredibly good um, promotional skill work or um, they have hired enough people around them who are intelligent that know how to promote them enough mm-hmm. so that the thing that they made can get more eyes. Or if they're like a mystery person where it's like you kind of disappear. Like Frank Ocean's one of those guys where it's like you never know what he's doing and then he finally drops something out of the blue and it just like it hits. And it's like, oh, fuck, this is out now? Yeah, I and mean, he, those- he has that. But let's be honest. I mean, I'm not, this is no diss on him. Frank is a, is also niche in the world oh, of first name basis. Y- oh, F Dog is what I call him. Oh, F- cool, F- my bad. F Boy. I think I call him F Boy. Yeah. Uh, F Boy Island this week on Netflix with Nikki Glazer. Glazer. Uh, no, I think fr- I think with him it's like he's not in the commercial space. Do you know what I'm saying? Like he's a he's niche in the world of like he's very known in music, but yeah. he's not pop culturally known. So he captivates a market that is already itching for him to continue to make art. Like, I don't think... Okay, I see If I go ask 30 people on the street, you know, varying ages who Frank Ocean is, I think uh, half would know. Yeah, yeah. You know, but if I go said who's fucking, you know, Taylor Swift is... Uh, you know gotcha. what I mean? It's just, okay, seriously. He's not in the pop culture space. So it's like, for him, I think he wants to stay more isolated and small and then make something and then go away for a little bit. Yeah, I also think... Because he's already like, got the audience. I think it's on accident, his mysteriousness. I think he's like, oh, I just like wanted to be away from a little bit. Get and away then, from the machine. Yeah, but then everyone's like, he's so mysterious and, and like whatever it is. But like, it's also the same thing with like Chappelle. It's like it, nothing, nothing, nothing. Boom, special. You're like, oh fuck, it's everywhere. Yeah. But I feel like uh, what he did in the beginning to get that is like what I feel like I have to go through now. It's like they're sending me so many uh, like uh, things. That... You say that, but some of those guys were always that way. Really? That's yeah. True. Some of those guys were just always that way. They always were like, I'll give it to you when I'm ready, and it just works for some reason. Yeah. You know, it just yeah. And it, granted, this is my first special, so I don't really know how much I need to do, but like, I really want to like just just go all out. Because if I did as much promo as I could and it does great, awesome. I feel like I earned it. If it flops, hey, I did what I could. Well, there's no flopping. That doesn't exist. That's not a real thing. It's gonna come out, and people are gonna like it. Some people won't see it. Some people. Yeah. How do you feel before like when, like a week for cheeseburger? Are you, does, just, does, are you just still couldn't care less? Really? Yeah, couldn't care less. I put it out. I had fun. I hope you like it. That's yeah, literally I how it. I feel. I loved it. Yeah. I had a good time. Yeah, the first cut, I was like, what the fuck is this? Well, yeah, that's... And, and then yeah. I sat down with it, and after, like, you know, I drove up to the editor's place and, like, stayed there for the weekend, and we, like, just went through all this edits, and, and then I was like, there it is, there it is, and I was like, it felt very collaborative. Sure. And I was pitching stuff to it. But, I mean, that's, 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 I, I honestly, because you know that some people aren't going to like it. Mm-hmm. A lot of, a lot of people, most people, mo- most people won't see it. Yeah. So then I just go, the people that do see it. I hope they fucking dig it, and I hope they know that I enjoyed the fuck out of making it. Yeah. It was more fun than anything. I never wanted to be, and this is, I want to know with you, like, I never wanted to be this, like, profound comedian. I just wanted to go (laughs) fuck around and have fun. Like, I wanted to be fun. It is funny looking at how, like, how HD and how, it's like 8K gorgeous picture, and I'm up there being like, I don't mind coming too quick, huh? Yeah. It is just funny, like... Like when there's like you go to the video village and there's just like ten different cameras and all right, cut to C, cut to A, but the yeah. material you're talking about is the same thing you'd be doing at the improv any given night. Sure. 
Yeah. So it's it, it's just funny that like uh, it it just looks so good. It looks phenomenal, and not to jerk my own cack, but I think it looks really good. I love the set dressing. And uh, who did it? Who shot it? Eight hundred pound uh, gorilla. Yeah, the best. They're the and best. And then That's Brandon right. Dermer, buddy of ours. Yeah. He reckon he couldn't do it because of uh, he's a bitch. No, the writer strike. Director he's strike. A bitch. Director strike. He That's couldn't what he fucking said you, say dude. action. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, he had his buddy George do it. Who you know? Yeah, George. Tapped. Yeah. Yeah, so he so he did it for me, and he fucking crushed it, man. I'm really excited. It looks great, and um, and the jokes are funny. Jokes are funny, and you bring out you bring out um, an animal on stage, and you sacrifice it. Is that the? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna like, kind of save that for like the ending beat. Oh, we'll cut it. We can cut that. Yeah, we if you if it. you yeah. could, please. But you yeah. do you like kill, you kill a small dog? Is that what that is? It's it's like kind of like a it's like a Yorkie. So like, is it a dog? That's you true. Know? That's kind of the, the, I, I did a poll on my Instagram beforehand. I was like, "What dog is like not a dog?" And most people are like the the crusty white dogs. You can, those got to go. What dog are you guys cool with me <laughs> killing on stage? And Basset Hound was a runner up, but they're like just put him out of the misery. Every bark those things have sounds like the oh, last. Oh, fuck. my buddy growing up had one of those fucking things. Yeah, that and beagles. Yeah, yeah. beagle. That's what it is. That was a beagle. I, beagles, I mistaked that too. But Basset Hounds have those sad ones too. Yeah, beagles. They, yeah. I mean, what their the ears fuck drag are the ground though. That's cute, dude. They that is fucking, cute. You know, they mop up the. Floor. Dude, they could fly so easy, just flap those over the eyes. But you're a cat sleep. guy. You know, you don't like dogs. Yeah. Well, the next special, I'm going to sacrifice my own cat. Good for you. And it's going to be called "Is Pluto a Planet," starring Johnny Manziel. That's right, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so probably I'd sacrifice. It'd be kind of tight if Johnny Manziel did your jokes on stage. You shot him doing your shit. That'd be fucking rad. Do you That'd know have been a good promo. I feel like, I feel like I'm going to call him right now. Yeah, you know. Him? Johnny, imagine if he's just on Facetime all like, the time. I feel like, well, with like me. you're you went to ASU or U of A, Arizona State. Watch your mouth, dude. Sorry, sorry, Didn't sorry. Didn't go to school in Mexico, dude. Forks went up, to dude. Phoenix, dude. Forks oh, up, yeah, my the dog. dirty T. Yeah, yeah. But I, he, he's Phoenix. in Arizona. He's an Arizona guy. He's in yes. Scottsdale. Yeah, you know him. I don't know him, dude. I, he, I know a few people that have like run into him. You know yeah. what I mean? But I don't. Uh, I do not know him. But I'm fascinated by. Him. I am fascinated by. Did the you guy. watch the documentary? on Oh yeah, I watched that. And like, man, it's. It's almost like sad. Well, here, here's here's my kind of for people that haven't seen it. It's just you know it's a tale of like the struggle of what it's like to come out of being, you know, the most uh, you know hyped up I mean, beloved Jesus Heisman Christ. winner yeah. out of college, and then the NFL kind of pushing you around a little bit and not really working. You feeling not a part of the system. You struggling with this outside these outside things. Yeah. And I will say this: uh, when I've spoken to any of the people at that high level, the the thing that we don't recognize as regular people is like. They've been training like that since they were chill, and I mean literal children. Yeah, especially Texas. Yeah, your child, you're just seven yeah. years old, and you're and you're being pumped into a system. Yeah, so they cut the umbilical cord and go hike. Let's go, baby. Right, yeah, they come out like that. They go yeah. Omaha, <laughs> Omaha. That's his middle name. How'd his you know? First words for Omaha. Yeah. yeah, they so they breed you into this world of like you have to be obsessed with sports. So by the time they hit uh, twenty two, they they're tired. It kind of feels like your friend who was grew up super super religious, and then they go to college and they finally get a little bit of freedom, and they're like, I don't need to live by my parents' rules. Yeah, anymore. they're like, what the fuck was I thinking? Suddenly, I'm doing cocaine off a of Buick key, <laughs> and I kind of like it. An Aztec, an Aztec mm. key, a Pontiac Aztec. Like we have Sorry. a fam, we have a family friend who 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 grew up uh, pretty strict Mormon. And yeah, then are... all of the kids rebelled. Yeah, all of them went off the radar because they were like, "Oh, you can live more free. You don't have to feel guilty about wanting to have a drink." Or yeah. it just—I think culturally, when you force people to do something for so long, when you're really young, when you get older, you're definitely going to be like, "Fuck that." Well, you try it, and you're like, "Oh my god, this is so much better." Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. A Mountain Dew to a fucking a Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'll Luke. relapse right there. I mean, Lose dude, that and the Amish. The Amish fascinate me too. Have you ever seen them? Yeah, oh yeah. I and mean, when I'm doing gigs in like Pennsylvania, you're just yeah. like driving from gig to gig. You open your eyes, and there they are, horse and buggy out. I do they, love that. They have cool ones. I saw one recently. It was it was it was Matt Black with black windows. They got the A Jesus buggy was wagon, bu blacked dude. out, dude. Yeah, it wow. Was, it was like sick. It like look. I mean, maybe somebody died and it was like a hearse or something. Yeah, but it I was just gonna say it could have been something else. Yeah, I don't know. It, but it looked like the like the Pope was in town. That is pretty clean. Do they dude. ever dress up their horses? I wonder. You know, do they they does their, like? No. Do, well, they got convertible versions too. They got the drop the, top, drop the soft top. top. Woo, there it is. In the Kids in the back being like, "What the fuck you looking at? You see them back there? <laughs> the horse and buck." Yeah. So like, I like I want to okay. live Amish for a week just to see what's going on. You want to go? You could. Yeah. Well, there's a show I love watching called Return to Amish, and they have, it's like a reality show, and they mm -hmm. beef. God, so fucking. And funny like what they beef over they're like you texted darlene they're like what the fuck did you say i did 
I text it. I don't do that devil magic. <laughs> it's fucking great. I've I never lo- seen the show before. I I've never love heard of it. So it's just TV. documenting people that live in the Amish community. It's people who I think the family's still full blown Amish, but then somebody left and then oh, came yeah. back. I like when they leave. Yeah. Oh, and they came back. Well, though. they. Yeah, but uh, I think this whole show is fake somehow because like they wouldn't allow somebody with a video camera in their house. But like, dude, the slow mo. Look at this. It's fucking hard. That is kind of rad. But they I'm- like somebody goes to, like New York and then they come home and they're like. What was it like in that fucking people world? <laughs> well, Did that's you, like uh, rum springing. That's what it is, right? Rum springing. You know what that is? Uh-uh. Sounds rum, fun though. Rum springing is a um, it's a one year sabbatical. Oh yeah, uh, that they take to go here. The rum you get one year to see if you want to live. Yeah, that rum life. springer. Write a passage during adolescence translated from Russian. Guys smoking crack. That's right. Yeah. Well, you got to light up a rock. I mean, if I had a year to leave the Amish and do whatever, how soon are you smoking crack? First day, my guy. First day. That's where my first, first stop day is out. go get yeah. a rock. I'm getting the horse and buggy, and I'm blowing crack up my ass. So they're allowed to go rage for like a year. That's and if they awesome. come back, it's because they really, I think the goal is if they come back, it's because they really want to be a part Dude, of the faith. this is like the Amish bar mitzvah. Like, that is the best thing I think you could, a year? You and I should write a movie about rum springer. Be really should fun. do it. It's like, I'll be your, I'm your older brother. I never did it. And, oh. and in the movie, your will say your well. How old are they when you do rum spring? Uh, there was obviously a movie about. Look at it that guy sure. right there. Was it good? It's, but it's no, it wasn't good. We're doing our version. You think oh, that's on Netflix. You think a Trevor Wallace, Andrew Santino rum spring is, isn't going to crush? It'll kill, dude. Yeah, but FX, I got the idea hello. right here. I'm your older brother. When did it come out? 2022. Yeah. What does it say? Your what does it, it counts say? on hold. Jesus Christ. Young I'm Amish man trying to. Uh, Travels to Berlin on a ride of passage to connect Berlin. with his roots. Yeah, no, no, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. I got a better version of this. Rum spring. I don't even know if you can say that word still. Rum springer. So you're you're 18 in the movie. You're yeah. about to become a man. What the fuck? Uh, that's uh, never mind. All Osama right. bin Laden so and eight- Ariana Grande. You didn't know they used to date. Is that what? Yeah, Osama and Ariana Grande were a couple for a short period of time. Wow, isn't that crazy? Yeah. She was the one. She was just whispering in his ear there. Tower two. <laughs> that was all her, dude. Yeah, the, uh, the Bush secret. Yeah, <laughs> the Bush secret. By the way, let's wow. bring up a picture of that one more time for fun. When Bush is told that the planes hit the tower on uh, 9-11, my favorite thing about that is um, people were so angry about his reaction. What did you want him to do? Turn to yeah, a bunch yeah, of kids yeah. and be like, dude, did your you, guys are not going to believe this. <laughs> did you see the golf swing? Oh, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. Oh, I, talked about, I talked about it in my special. I do a bit about where he's like, you know, we have to defeat terror, right? And yeah. he's like, now watch this swing. <laughs> I love this guy. He was like, we're going to bomb the world. Now check me out. I think he handled it hilariously. It was great. What did you want him to do? That's the second he found out about 9-11? That's when he's being told that uh, the exact words whispered in George Bush's ear that uh, the United States is under attack. And then he just cuts to a Blue Chew ad. And he's like, oh, we'll be right back. But today we're responsible by a Blue Chew. It'd be great if you just threw in a Zen, just fucking (laughs) threw in a roof. Oh, this is the exact. I've never seen this video. This is the exact moment where he is told in his ear. What was he doing before this? He's just like doing a book reading to kids or something like that. Doing one of those. Look, he's like, "Uh, Mr. President, there's a plane just ran into the World Trade Center. Huh. Because after the first one, they didn't know it was a terrorist attack. There was a lot of like misinformation about it. And that basically confirmed that it was a terrorist attack and we were at war and all the reports and he's still reading the book well i think he's contemplating what the fuck i'm gonna do well because what he's really thinking is it worked it worked it worked <laughs> <laughs> this is and he looks over and goes let me know about number three, let me know about number three. <laughs> holy shit dude i had no idea that he was just like in a classroom right yeah, there he's just kicking it well how old were you during 9-11 mm. what is you were born in what 92 holy shit eight I think it was in first grade. Yeah, you don't remember it at all. No, I remember the morning. Oh, you do? I remember the morning. We were in class, and the teacher like said something like, this is going to be a very different day. And I was like, I don't know a what that A different means. day? Yeah. That's all I remember. I remember pretty vividly. I was in high school. But uh, my teacher also had a pet snake in that class, so that's very on brand for her. That's... And if you got extra credit, you could watch her on the last Friday of the month, watch her feed the snake a mouse. What? Yeah, you can watch it. Like everybody would go to recess, and if you like got good grades, you could watch the snake feed. Mrs. That's Kyle, cool. shout out to her. Mrs. Kyle. Yeah. Kit shout Kyle. out to Miss Kyle. Yeah. I hope she's not. I hope she's one of the good ones. Yeah, she's still around. Well, because all I keep reading is every teacher. Look, like if you just Google teacher and I mean, student, if you want to be around kids all day, it says something it's about creepy, you. dude. Yeah. Oh, but they just division? busted another one. They just busted yeah, okay. teacher and that one right there. They just busted X-Men one yesterday. School. What does it say? Uh, another X Men school teacher abuse. hooking up with. Uh, a 14-year-old or something? It's insane, dude, how many of these chicks hook up with these young dudes. I just looked up teacher. I didn't even look up. Yeah, Holy hit. shit. It Put it the word step so teacher in front of it. See what else Step pops teacher. Up. Step teacher. That's I got, dropped that's my new, pencil, step teacher. That's the new category coming out. <laughs> step teacher. When worlds combined. 
all the chalk has been smacked out of these eraser step teachers. Oh, I <laughs> clap my cheeks like those erasers. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, look, if you're a teacher and you want to teach middle school, what's going on? Here's the deal. You should have to be ugly. <laughs> oh, the teacher? I think you should have to be ugly so that kids aren't trying to have this weird the relationship. The teacher or the kids? Whose fault well, the is kids it? Are, kids are always ugly. Kids are fucking repulsive creatures. Good answer. You ever seen a teenage boy? They're fucking hideous. They're dumb looking. Teenage boys are the ugliest things to ever walk the earth. They're the dumbest... They're the dumbest version of any creature. That's yeah, that is true. They're the ugliest, most un uncomfortable and awkward. They look like an energetic sloth. Like their hair is kind of just over their eyes. Like the, the, <laughs> the facial expression is slow, but they're like moving with pace. And they're know? beaming with, with hormones, but they don't know how to feel about them. So they're really like, like itchy and gross in their own skin. And they're all pimply and greasy. And they never... Teenage boys to me are I, I, I like... You, it, Hot. Yeah, for you... Maybe. <laughs> Not for me, dude. I think they should be eradicated from society. I think you should hide your teenage boys until yeah. they until they become like 17. Like and what then Michael it, Jackson did with his son, Blanket. Yeah, trap like, them. And then let them out face. again. Yeah, when, when they're he's done. an adult. Hibernate your teenage boys. From like 13 to yeah. 17, they go. should be hibernating. I for swear to God. about 10 winters. Yeah, like an all-boys school should be like, an, uh, it should be like a prison. They should not be able to leave until Damn. they become men, and then they cut it out with the bullshit. Yeah, did you ever go to like an all boys school? No, dude, what I went to an all girls school, public school. I did go to those. Okay, yeah, okay. would not let me in. <laughs> all right, just knock on the door. You don't know what I am. Yeah, don't define me. I got tits. Now I'm a public school kid, man. I'm yeah, a fucking have to be. public have school to be. kid through and through. I didn't really know private school to me was always well Catholic school or whatever. As a kid, that was for kids that whose parents were either you know pretty rich, yeah, or kids who were fucking smart. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like, we were just dumb, regular kids. Like, the smart kids would go to Catholic school because they knew it was going to up their chance of getting to a better university. Yeah, I was a dumb kid in high school. I was a senior in a math class with sophomores. No. I thought it was tight. It was not. Not tight. Yeah, the guy who's, uh, this guy gave $20 to give me weed, never gave me weed. Was it punked, got, got, got? He you was in my caught. class with me. It was me and a guy who ripped me off for 20 bucks just in class. And you never said anything? You never tried to fight this guy? He was... Uh, Bigger than you. He, very big. Bigger than he you. was on like the football team. He, There's Trev in high that's school. That's high dude. school. So think even worse. Damn, yeah, dude, dude I look gauges. Fly as shit. I look like I should run for mayor of Tucson. That's a <laughs> that's a guy right there. But yeah, the guy who stole weed from me, uh, or weed money, was just sitting right behind me in class, Anthony. Why does it say verified on that? Anthony, what? Let's call him out, dude. I don't remember his Anthony, last name. you know who you are. You can't steal. You can't steal money from Trevor now, dude. Where yeah. is he now? And where are you I now? Have no idea. Pretty good. I think he won that war, probably. I think so. You got the twenty bucks back. But hey, you know what? If you need that twenty dollars, then whatever. You know that's that's God's plan right there, as, as our boy uh, Champagne Poppy Drake said. That's exactly right. That kid has cancer, by the way, Anthony. Riddled with it. Oh yeah. Huh. That's what you get, bitch. <laughs> no, uh, I don't. But yeah, it's uh, that class. It was all sophomores and then me. And then my friends would be like asking me, like, "Did you? Did, how's your algebra? Is your t class hard?" And I'm like, "Algebra? When do I get to that level?" Yeah, that's in college, right? Yeah, dude, yeah. I was not smart. I, I was like literally doing like whippets and shit. I was like, I was a weird kid in like high school. I just hung out with dudes and we like would just try to get high. That sounds right. And we found out about chicks are like sophomore, end of sophomore year. And we're like, whoa. Seems like a lot of work, but I'll try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. I'll put in some of the effort. Are these like an indica or sativa? Like, how do they get us high? I remember one time my high school girlfriend said, uh, High school girlfriends are great. She goes, I don't know why you feel Back like down. lying to me about hanging out with your guy friends. And I was like, What do you mean? And she's like, You'll pretend that we're going to hang out and then never make time for me. And I'm like, Because I don't like you like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just want you to wear my football jersey on Fridays. <laughs> That's all this relationship is. I like is. you a lot, but like I like my friends so much more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, Clark can play guitar and is a tarantula. What do you bring to the Come table? Come on, dude. Did you guys do that at your school where like the the chicks would wear the guys' football jersey on Friday? Yeah, I didn't play football, but I that's but I, that you, was a thing. I, I didn't either. Yeah, that but was a thing. But just seeing that, like that's how like girls would like hard launch like their relationship with a guy. They'd be like Wait, she's wearing... Wear his jersey. Yeah. yeah. It was also, I think during my era, it was also class rings was a big thing. Like, you gave your a girl a, your class ring. Like, she wore wow. your class... I think that was also, like, another thing. I didn't do any of that cornball bullshit. I didn't even... Yeah, are you kidding me? My Authority. My, a coach? Shut the fuck up. You want to run a play? You're talking... You're yeah. running your mouth. I was now so bad at that, up. dude. And my coach actually criticized me. He was like, you don't want to... Uh, he said something like, you're too good for a Letterman jacket. <laughs> And I was like, no, I just, that's not me. I don't want to wear that. Ja I want to play the sport. I don't need to wear the jacket to let people know I play the sport. Dude, and he was like that. real critical of it. He thought, I, so what's I, worse, you doing that or the guy who wears the Letterman like five years after high school? 
Definitely the guy after high school. One hundred percent. That's the saddest guy. I don't think that happens in this day and age anymore. But it did. Our, small my towns, generation. Small, small town, towns, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. class ring was really weird. It was like I see guys. I would see guys after high school wear their class ring. I'm like, what are you doing? My dude? buddy uh, used to work for the USC football team. Didn't even play for USC football, but he worked for the team. He did like sales and shit. So, yeah. we, had, so we had a ring somehow. And when we would go out, he would like wear it. And I'm like, that is. Stolen valor, stolen one. valor, dude. But also, like, check your paper, soldier. <laughs> it's like I would see him from across. We go to like the bungalow in Santa Monica, the worst bar in the world, but my favorite. And you just see him across, be like, that's fucking so sweet. It's just like you can just see. I mean, him, like, would, people would probably bite the bait. I'm sure there were some 100%. girls that were like, that's so cool. The ring was massive. Yeah, it was like a ring pop on steroids. All right, <laughs> but like it, like. I like try to wear it. it. Didn't fit. I have like little feminine fingers. It didn't fit my fingers. I'll like, just wear it as a necklace. <laughs> little but, tiny head. But the bungalow crazy. in Santa Monica. That was the spot, huh? Yeah, that was the you ever spot. Been? Many, many, many years ago, man. I used I to mean, live in Santa Monica when I first moved to LA. So that was like the Saturday day spot. If I like didn't have anything going on. I can't believe you're not a beach guy. I would fit you for a beach guy for the yeah, rest of your I life. I lived in Santa Monica for the longest time. Then I lived in Venice for a little bit. Got over then, it. Yeah, I just like sick I, of the homeless stuff. I know that's cliche, but it is real. It is tough down there. It's just, it's just too much. It's too much I didn't like, vagrancy. I didn't like leaving my house and then you're just immediately in the chaos. Yeah, that's what it is. It's too much. It's it, too I much. love New York, but it's the second you're out of your place, you're just in it. You're just in the 101. See, but New York feels less threatening to me because everyone's kind of doing something. Correct. Where Venice people are like milling about. I just feel like it's like yeah, nobody has me, a goal. Yeah, that is true. If Venice had more like guys with the briefcases, I'd be like, this is normal. Yeah, but Venice feels like uh, how how all of the characters in Truman Show were. Like they're yeah. pretending <laughs> to do something. Yeah, 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 you're yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. fucking doing anything. Yeah. None of these people have jobs. Yeah, your laptop is upside down. What are you <laughs> typing on? Just dunk, 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 dunk. Meeting yeah. adjourned. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I don't. That was my problem with the West Side was always like... It's it's really lax. It's, it's, it's too it's it's a lot of people doing nothing and they're all there. I don't I don't like that. It is very bizarre. Tuesday two p.m. packed. Packed. What is going on? Neil Brennan used to be like, I got to get out of here. I don't need to go into another coffee shop r- watching someone write their dream. I was like, that's so funny. That is. Funny. Like the West Side is filled with people just like just manifesting. Like last night we went out and got something to eat and there was a kid who was writing. What looked like code, maybe I'm too dumb yeah, to yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And he was sleeping at his computer at the right. coffee shop, writing code. And I was like, "L.A. is a city where it's like, if you're gonna have a dream, we want to all see you doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better get out there and show they want off a double sided laptop so everybody can see it all <laughs> given angles. Like, I am writing a screenplay. It is kind of weird. It's, I mean, this this city promotes. Uh, flaunting the process where i think other cities oh like God. new york and chicago are like you don't really talk about it until you've done it mm-hmm. but here somebody moves here the first year they're like i'm an actor and you're like oh ser- oh wow yeah, yeah. I, what have you been doing it's like i haven't i was I on even- a ring camera last night so <laughs> yeah <laughs> haven't even done one audition Dude, but mean- it's just people are allowed you're allowed to promote your dreams at face value here so much louder than other, other places are a little bit more embarrassed about their dreams but i also feel like the more you talk about it it's like it's like the louder guy in the fight's gonna get his ass beat you know like the yeah. more you talk about it the more i'm like i don't believe you that's true right just you know? do it yeah like, do the yeah, work you've been in this town long wow you know those guys that just like every time they see you like yeah i'm actually pitching i'm working on this thing remember that, that movie i told you yeah do we gotta have you? and then i'm like what you have 10 different projects going on right now my, Name my, one. my Whenever somebody does that, I always go, but how are you? Smart. Like, are you, how are Cut you? The How's the guy? Yeah, because like, I don't want to, like, fucking sit... give a shit about what project you're working on. Right, How's the it... dude? Yeah. Like, just, what is the dude I never dude know how doing? to, like, stop that talk, but that's great. I but cut it off. You? I cut it off. I'm always like, yeah, but what's going on with you for real? Yeah, you're great with that. Well, when I do that, it's kind of like, it's saying, no offense, but I don't give a fuck about. Right, 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 right. If I like you as a guy, yeah. I don't like your fucking... Your uh, your drive for work. Do you think entertainment is the only art that does that? Like, do you think anybody in like HR just no, like, dude, that's big. Is like, you know ones. what I've been working on? I was crushing some slack this morning, and then tomorrow <laughs> night we got an investor meeting with a pitch meeting. Now, yeah, look at finance. I'm sure those guys no, never shut the fuck up about that. Yeah, shit. that's Adderall, baby. Yeah, right. They're just fucking cranking. Cocaine, co- co- cocaine's new daddy, Adderall. I just feel like anything in a business of where your success rate is dependent upon your output. I think yes. people are going to talk a lot about it, right? If you're if you're okay. a hedge fund guy, yeah. uh, if anything in money and finance and movement, it's like you have to go make it, mm-hmm. which is what we do. It's like you got to go make your own career. People are going to talk about it because they want you to know they're doing it in the event that you can maybe help them get the thing that they need, uh, which is also a little disingenuous and unfortunate that it's like, you know what I'm working on? And you remember that guy we used to hang with you? If you know, if that guy's, I don't know, if you guys, I mean, if he can, yeah, if you reach out and connect us, and which yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll help, up. I'll help anybody that I can, that I know is putting in the effort to do something, right? I'll help you as much as I can. But 
sometimes people are crazy out of bounds in this city. Oh my god! They ask for stuff, and you're like, "That's fucking insane." Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, why would that's insane that you even think that that's cool to to ask for? But you got to applaud the balls too. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, well, fucking, if you don't say it, nobody yeah, knows. Tim Dillon had a really funny story where it was like some guy randomly DMs, like, I got a great pitch for Rogan. And then he didn't respond for like four hours. And the guy's like, fine, you're a bitch, anyways. <laughs> it's like, what? Did, four hours? How did we get from this to this? Yeah. But I, all, that would make me want to respond. That would make me be like, that's fucking. I'm good. a bitch. I'll screen. I'm a bitch. I'll screenshot this and send it to Rogan. <laughs> it's just, you clearly have alpha energy radiating through your body. <laughs> I'll fire this off to Big Dog. Yeah, that is. Well, the. The flippant nature of people that love you and hate you is very funny too. Like if you ever dive into your request folder sometimes. Oh, that's crazy. I dive in there sometimes. Like once in a while I like to like duck in there and see what's going on. My favorite is if I see someone has messaged me four years ago yeah, and yeah. is like, um, I fucking love you, man. Yeah. I love this thing that you did or whatever. And then a year and a half later, I was like, dude, fuck you, loser. Yeah, what changed? And then another year later, they're like, what's been going on with you and Bobby? <laughs> dude, you can literally see a timeline of their emotional instability with you. Yeah. Where you're like, what's going on, it's like dude? It's just a live mood ring going I on. I do kind of dip into those requests sometimes just to see people who have- Did you respond or you just, over just to look years. at them? No, I never. I, I don't want to respond to it. No. No, no because yeah. it's- it, Most of- It validates. Well, no, but most of them are like- um, uh, most of them are f racist video clips that people want me to show Bobby. <laughs> Most of them are like a fat Asian guy who's like, is this Bobby? That's mostly what it is in my DMs. I was going to say. because Exclusively dudes. I will say that. You, yeah, like, I was going to say. Being it's always married, bros. Yeah. I was, it's I was, always I bros. Imagine. I'll show you. I'll, are Bobby's DMs horny? Oh, yeah, because he's single. He's right, running. He's right. running hot. Look at how many dudes. Yeah. It's all dudes. Look at this. All dudes. Yeah. A lot of car Marco, profile photos. Ryan, Ben, Robert, David. That was me. That's you. That was my fin stuff. Look at I mean, honestly, da Danny, Dallas, Nick, Joel, Joe, Rowan, Craig. Rowan <laughs> could be a chick. No, it's a dude. It's oh, two, fuck. And it's two dudes hugging, holding fists up in the photo. <laughs> Even manlier. But do you see, I mean, it's just like, it's literally, it's all bros that are trying to yeah. send me a funny clip. Yeah. Or saying something rude like, fuck you. or yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's all the same bullshit. It is funny how people have a change of heart. Are you a single guy right now? You I'm don't a single guy right You now, are? Yeah. 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 Looking for love. Don't really know what's going on. But uh, also like, this I, I was touring like crazy and ready for the special and I was in Australia and now I'm like I'm just once this is out I can like pick my head up and I'm here for like five months and I'm like then I can figure out life let's talk about Down Under for a minute Australia do you love it you've been yeah yeah dude I shot a movie there at the beginning of the year holy shit congrats Wait, yeah the beginning of this year I'm like what dude, year dude you it? are booked and busy you're, you're on I was on a flight the other day I saw, I saw a house party uh, yeah, well, dude, yeah, 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 I did that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was, just didn't. Uh... And what do you think about it? <laughs> Let's pull up IMDb on that. No, but it's so cool, just like. <laughs> I had fun. You, yeah, you're always. It's fun to pop in on something that's, that's what not I yours. Want. Yeah, you that's pop what in, I it's not want. yours. Well, dude, the risk of like like this movie that I'm that's coming out next year, I, it, I'm in it. It's different. House Party. Or fucking, what was the other one I did? Dave, uh, I think no, you not show. No, uh, Lil Dicky's the actor in it. <laughs> yeah. No, that was Charlie's movie. No, what was the other thing? That See, that's came out? so cool. You're forgetting roles, mm -mm. dude. I have four roles in my life. I know all of them. Well, that, no, these are like small things I do. That like it was tiny. Like, uh, no, the thing I did in Me Time with Kevin Hart and them. Yeah, like yes, it's, it's, yes. But it's small. It's yeah, so small that. that the onus is not on me. Is but what I'm I saying. love that you show up to set. You're in it for a week and you fucking dip. Yeah, have fun and leave. You're, that's why if it doesn't do well, it doesn't bother me. But like this movie coming out next year will bother me because it's I'm it's in all it. you. It's well, no, it's not. All, but I've been like it's. I, I'm a major. I'm one of the three main characters. Where'd you shoot it in? Uh, us, us Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne, Melbourne, yeah, Melbourne, yeah mate. Fuck yeah, I liked it out there. You know, what I loved is how. They pronounce certain words like how they how they say tattoo blows my mind. Tattoo, tattoo, yeah, tattoo. They just they get the first the T the A the T and then just deep throat the O's. Where'd you spend the most time, Sydney? Sydney, yeah. Did you Sydney, like Sydney? Loved it. I thought it was cool. Uh, but so it's funny. all just a town. In my head, it was gonna be like the wild thorn bears out there. Like it was no, like some no, like no. jungle. Dude, it's just the. You gotta city. go into the outback, mate. You I gotta go to. out in the bath. Yeah, we went to Perth. Did you go there? I didn't go to Western. I'm gonna go. To Perth on this next run we're doing next year. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I'm going to The shows are phenomenal. Did yeah. you do stand-up when you're out there shooting or no? I just, no, when I was filming, I didn't have any time. We were shooting every day. And we shot on the fucking weekends, which was crazy. So we'd have one day off. That's uh, a lot of hard work for Australians because they're pretty yeah, they lazy needed, people. They needed to shoot the fuck out of this movie. We needed to knock it out fast. They only had a certain, we only had so many days. Yeah. And, uh, um. Dude, that time, how long were you there for? Two and a half months or something like that. I Holy shit! You, were you around? There you was a around. minute where I just stopped seeing you on lineups. Was that when you were shooting it? Yeah, I was down there. Yeah. Well, I also at the beginning of the year I was in New York for a while, and then I went to Paris for this 
weird, crazy yeah, thing. Yeah, a lot of stuff in like a disrespectful way. No, I get it. Like, yeah, it was rude. It was a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It, it was it was New York and then Paris and then Paris. I came right back here for two days and then I went to Australia for two and a half months. Holy fuck. So I was gone for a really long time. And then the moment I got back, we left again. Uh, so it was kind of, yeah. The beginning of the first half of the year was... That jet lag is unreal. It was kind of wild. Yeah, I lost my mind a little bit. It's kind of unreal. I, I had a little bit of a break, a little psychotic break. Yeah, really? Well, my, I was there for two... I, I literally was in the United States. You're trying to communicate. It was nuts. It was just two... I went Paris. Oh. I went New York, Paris, Paris, New York, New York, L.A. for two days packed and then left. So when I landed, and the day I landed, I had to go to work. Like, I had to go to a fitting and... Um, do these reads and all this stuff, and then that night, oh, I had like a little bit of a psychotic break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to go get something to eat, and I was like, I'm in fucking, I'm so far away from home. Like, it fucked me up for yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I called my wife, and I was like, I'm a little fucked up. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I felt freaked out. Because it all was so fast. Yeah, you know? I did shrooms in Amsterdam over oh, the summer. Oh, that's fun. That was fun, but then I looked at a Google map. Don't do that if you're on shrooms. I'm like, dude, I'm so fucking far from home. If you die, yeah. Yeah, it's a long gonna flight. fly my body, or I'm gonna get buried in Amsterdam. What next to Red Light District? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, not a bad place. And see, see, see Trevor Wallace, yeah. <laughs> right here, Trevor Wallace. Did you go to the Red Light uh, District? I did. Yeah, did mm -hmm. you get one? You got a little friendly. I you can be honest about it. It's not that big of a deal. I opened deal, up a door because I was looking for my friend, mm -hmm. and I came out uh, not a virgin anymore. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Lost dude. it. I lost it in Amsterdam. First time I went to Amsterdam, I saw that. I, I, we went down to the Red Light District. Doesn't and... blow your mind. It's just there. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. But but like if. You think it'd be more hidden. It was like being on Venice Beach, and it's just like smoke shop, kebab shop, tits. <laughs> yeah. Like it was just like it was just it wasn't like hidden at all. No, I I, I mean I thought the freedom of it was kind of cool. It was like yeah, uh, it was awesome. Do it or don't. That's how how mm -hmm. how it feels there. Um, I couldn't. I genuinely don't have the balls to do it. I was I had friends that did, and I was like I can't. I can't uh, and they were all like it's legal here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I know, dude, but I just I don't I don't know. The I male just, brain cannot I, comprehend Amsterdam. It's legal here is the same as like when someone's at a buffet and they're like, it's all free. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> all right, funny. you don't have to eat all of it just because yeah. it's there. You need crab legs at 9 a.m. Yeah, but I need to. And sketty and pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so I, I didn't, funny. I couldn't have done it because I was too, I just was like, I don't, I don't want to do it. watching guys go in and out. So the first night it was me and Michael. People watching is great. The people watching was the Wait, funny. Wait, Blau, did Blau get a little uh, friendly? So Blau got ripped off. Wow. Hilarious. My experience was like. Right down the middle, very hey, what's up? It was cool, ba da ba da ba ba, semen. Good exchange. Blaus, he got ripped off, and they kept asking for more and more money. And then after a certain amount of time, they're like, "Ah, oh, well, your time's up. Like you have twenty minutes, and it's nineteen minutes." He comes back to a bar, fuming. I mean, he's got the shortest temper, maybe, of anybody I've met. But he's I love a hothead, him. Yeah, hothead. So he's back to like fucking two hundred, and I paid for it. I was like, dude, go here, go go do it. You know, and he's gonna pay. He obviously paid. He's me mad back. about losing your money. Yeah, but that's exactly. Yeah, he was like, um, uh, how much was it? How much? How much was I think your? He ended up spending four hundred dollars. Nothing. happened. What was your event? How much was your? Two hundred. Two hundred bucks. Two hundred bucks. Good God. But uh, he came I back. I feel like that's crazy cheap for some reason. Yeah, two uh, two hundred U.S. dollars. So what I'm is gonna, it there? Yeah, in Amsterdam, that's like six that's sixteen a fiat bucks or something. Yeah. But. <laughs> But he came back fuming, like so mad because yep. he's such a control guy. He's like, I don't, you don't rip me off. I'm like, and he's just like yelling shit. And he was so mad. And I was like, dude, you can't let this be your one Amsterdam experience. Let's find you. We'll find you one. Yeah. So we took a, yeah, we, we got him back out. Took another walk. Yeah. And got then he came there, back, yeah. biggest smile ever. <laughs> but the people watching is hilarious because you'd watch a guy go in there. We sat at a bar across from one, just having a few beers. And then you'd see this guy walk out, big smile, slightly glistening a little bit, like a cinnamon glaze. Mm hmm. God damn it, it's hilarious. Now, when you go in there, you don't have to get too detailed, but when you go in there, go in that place. Is there like a menu? <laughs> the no, it's it's. Or very, they just say, "Hey, this is it." You yeah, get everything is orally. You know what I mean? But she walk in, she's like, "Because I, I was like, how does this work?" And she's like, uh, "You give me two hundred dollars, and we do this." And I was like, "All right." Wow, that's a great. Look. Very like my, the experience was like couldn't so, have been it's like, like McDonald's. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. do you want? This? That's all we have. So yeah, come on, everything was go. beeping in the background, too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a fry chef in the back smoking dogs. And she's blowing you. She's just like, well, somebody take those fries out, please. <laughs> please. Complimentary fries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breakfast is over. So take me back down to Australia. You you went Sydney, Perth, Sydney, Adelaide. Sydney, Melbourne, Perth. Auckland? Well, did you do New Zealand? I didn't do New Zealand. Adelaide? I did not. Did you do uh, Sydney, Perth, Melbourne, Brisbane? Did Bris four. Brisbane, yeah. Brisbane. Now, what did you like the most? Be honest. What city was the most fun? 
The most fun, the Sydney crowd was awesome. They were yeah, great. Sydney's pretty rad. Perth is a really cool city. It's like the most isolated city in the world, allegedly. Well, yeah, it's way out there. It's way out there, but they're not, like, they're on the other side of Australia. Nobody neighbors them, and then they're not within, like, five-hour flight of anywhere. Yeah, it takes from Sydney to Perth flight, it was what? It's like four hours. It's like almost, yeah, four it's and like a half LA hours, to, something like that. It's like LA to uh, New Sh- York. Chicago, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's going. Blows my mind that Australia, I mean, in my head, Australia is the size of Hawaii. Like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> like, in my head, I was like, wait, 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 I didn't look at the travel schedule. It's so big. I was, like, doing so much that the, I didn't, like, pack before the, the, the trip before the night before. I didn't really know what was going on. I was like, all right, wait, why is there a five-hour flight? Where are we going? They're like, it's just the other side of Australia. It is wild. But it's it's a massive Yeah, place. it's a big, big fucking country. What, what else did I like? The I, eastern side is a little bit closer. It's easier to get from yeah, exactly. Sydney to Melbourne and all that stuff. So I didn't, I, dude, I'm so dumb. They were like, yeah, you pass Hawaii to get here. I was like, what? I thought you had to go like past New York. In my head, everything <laughs> is east. It, yes, oh, dude. like 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 America. Like uh, anything left, it's just a brick wall. It's Truman Show. It's just done. It falls off. Yeah. Well, it is flat. <laughs> it is very very flat. The world is flat. It we is are flat. flat. Earthers here on We're whiskey flat. ginger. We, uh, we yes we are baby. Yeah. Uh, you believe what you want to believe. Look in the horizon, dude. Know the truth. Know yeah. the truth. The frogs are gay. <laughs> no, but I, I I know what you mean. I, I there was I do get the thought that you're like which way is quicker. But yes, obviously, yeah. blows my mind. West is. It's, but it takes really so like long to get there. The shows are great. The food was. Food. It was food. Food was good. Didn't go to Tasmania, did you? No. <laughs> Missed out, man. That's Tasmania. where I heard Fuck they do incest. Rad. There. Yeah, that's where it started. Really? Yeah, that's, that's where HQ. They... Yep. That's that is the version one. That's the beta of incest. That really? Started no, Tasmania is actually Hobart is where the uh, some of the original penal colonies were, and you can go to like where the first first people were shipped down uh, to be in jail. Some societies as ancient Egypt: brother, sister, father, daughter, mother, son, oh, cousin, cousin, aunt, Egypt. nephew. Other combinations of royal family married as a means of uh, perpetuating the royal lineage. At this point, uh, McCone is just Googling the word incest, and he's really <laughs> interested in it. I, was, I thought that was going to add to our story, but it did nothing. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. He just didn't know what the word incest I meant. I was curious to know where incest started. It's at home. At ho- right here, dude. There inside. It it's calls are coming from inside the house. Inside. inside. No, but, the, but the original penal colony is kind of wild. You see where like the original prisons were, but the funniest yeah. part about it is they're rad. Really? Imagine if someone's like, I'm going to banish you out to an island. Yeah. And you're, this is punishment. This is prison. But then you get there, you're like, this is a fucking tropical island? There was one in Sydney on the outskirts, kind of like, right, we're, we're on this boat. And it was just an isolated, very, very small island, right? Smaller than Epstein's. I haven't been. But it's just <laughs> it's a, just, a, just a castle. And like, oh, that used to be a prison. I was like, dude, 360 views of the water That's and the saying. opera house? It's beautiful. Yeah. I, What's oh, wrong I'm with sorry. this? Lock me up, daddy. <laughs> Yeah, no, some, so of, these, like, some of these original penal colonies were, like, really beautiful little areas. It was kind of crazy. And the Tasmanian devil, you know, the little Tasmanian yeah, yeah, devil, yeah, of course. the reason that they call it that is because they... Uh, I sacrificed one of my third special. You do? Yeah. Well, don't tell anybody yet. Sorry, sorry. Uh, the Tasmanian devil would scream in the middle of the night, and when these people first came to the island, non-indigenous people, obviously, they thought it was uh, the souls and ghosts of the dead. So they thought it was a... They thought no it was. Way. They thought these things are. Listen, to this that's what they thing. listen. That's listen. what they look like. When they fucking. So imagine, imagine that sound at night coming from the trees, and that's all you hear when you pull up on a fucking boat. Immediately, you're like, "Let's get how the fuck not, out of here." Yeah, how do you not leave? Let's get the fuck. Well, a lot. They a lot of people were, were afraid that there was dead, dead, uh, the ghosts and the, the souls of the dead. They thought were like inhabiting part of the island. God damn. That's why it's got a little Tasmanian devil, because it's a dark... It looks like 10 animals in one. Dude, that thing is actually incredibly rad. That thing's jaw really? is is so fucking strong, it's insane. When the guy went to go feed it... Look at the jaw it strength of a Tasmanian you off? How devil. How do you know? Look at that. Yeah, and I couldn't finish. <laughs> oh, nice. Because I was so interested in the stats. Did you see koalas down there? Yeah, fuck yeah, Did dude. you smell one? They smell like shit. Well, I don't Koalas know. I don't, do think not I, smell I don't know good. if I smelled it. I just pe- I touched, petted it. Yeah, there was one we, we were like right next to. Dude, it smelled terrible. Really? That's so funny. I didn't. I mean, I didn't know the the kangaroos were wild because the kangaroos they're are dope. They just don't give a fuck. No, they do their own shit. You go right up to them and they're they're kind of bugged out that you're in their space. Yeah, it feels very like all right, man. Act like you've been here before. Yeah. Oh, cool, a kangaroo. I punch. I get it. Like, Did they, you eat one? No, I wanted to. It was delicious. I heard. I, yeah. went, I had. I actually really enjoyed it. It was. Really? I had a kangaroo. All the were like, you gotta have one down. Here. You gotta try a little kangaroo meat. Of course. It was very fucking good. Yeah, but these. Oh, look. See, these guys. The jaw strength of these Tasmanian devils is absurd. God damn. For its size, it's the strongest bite that p- possible. But it rips through 
bone like butter because their 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 jaw is this this is the strongest part of all their yeah. muscles in the front of their face. I did not see any of these little guys. No, they were rat, but they fed it a carcass and, and they in it, dude. He threw it to him, but they're slow. They're not fast. Oh, really? And he was like, "Ah, oh, you're probably wondering why I'm throwing it and walking away." Because if he'll get a hold of your fucking hand, he'll rip <laughs> yeah, it clean yeah, yeah. off. And I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. really? He's like, he'll rip your fucking hand clean off your body. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. I mean, you you did watch the way they consume. It's creepy. Yeah, dude. This is what my first grade teacher should have been showing us. Hell like yeah, a snake dude. and a mouse. What the fuck is this? Yeah, I didn't. God, that's crazy. I didn't see any of these. Didn't yeah, they're see any creepy. Giant they're like spiders. big rats. You know what they yeah. look like? Rodents of unusual size from uh, from The Princess Bride. Yeah, they, they look. That's what they look like. Yeah. Do, you remember, do you remember that movie? Princess Bride, yes. Oh, such remember, a good flick. It's such a good flick. The rodents of unusual size. Yeah, they they uh, they kind of look like a rat. They'd be in like uh, Ninja Turtles or something. Like that's like, a big yeah. It's a little baby splinter. Yeah. So now okay. So now the special's out. Are you doing uh, Are you doing a new a new hour you're touring with right now? Or are you still? Touring so I'm not on tour right now. Uh, the plan is to go back out. The plan is to like, stay in L. A. for some months, build it up. You know, get something I'm happy with. Get at least like thirty new. Yeah, and, and then, then go work. Uh, yeah, and then go do some clubs and then see where that takes me. Uh, Good. Yeah, I mean, I'm just excited to be here. Take yeah. some meetings, try to pitch a couple things. I love what you do. You you're like you pop in, do a cameo on a thing, and or you're like a, you know reoccurring role, and then you know you tour bad friends and you tour yourself. And yeah, then, like I feel like you're so good at playing the duality of traditional and also like just main form media, mainstream. Media. Yeah, mainstream media. I'm try, I'm trying. I mean, I still because I still do like acting and all that stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, I mean, and you're a great actor. I mean, honestly, like what people people can see what you do just by the sketches that you create yeah, yeah, that yeah. you're. Thank you. Writing, producing them, directing them, and acting them, and the characterization that you're able to do. I mean, dude, look, you're gonna have a fucking long, long, good career. Just the problem is with what we do is uh, we used to rely on them, and now we don't have to. Yeah. So it's nice to go back over there sometimes. Yeah. But it's so much better to keep creating your own shit. Yeah, I never want to leave the online audience in that freedom. You can't do you because you built it. It's yours. It's they can't shake that out of you. You mm -hmm. know. Whereas Hollywood. And any of that stuff. It's very unpredictable. It's so quick for them to be like, we don't like this guy anymore. Yeah. And you're like, what? Dude, I thought you guys loved that guy. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, nah, dude, fuck that guy. We don't like him anymore. Yeah. And there's also so many people making that decision. There's like 40 people like behind a show. And if one person's like, I'm kind of out on Santino. It's like, yeah. you know, they might, And that's like, just at a lunch for yeah. some reason. You know, and like you're sitting across from him. Yeah. He's like, dude, where's the walnuts and the salad? We don't like you anymore. <laughs> But but you're gonna keep moving at, at such a fucking a lightning pace. I think uh, Thanks, man. you're off to the races, and then I hope uh, uh, people go enjoy the special and go watch it right now. Please uh, do. It's available on Amazon Prime. Prime Video, and if baby. If you don't have Amazon Prime, get it just for this. Or wait three years and I'll put it on my YouTube. After nah, the dude, back. just get it. If you don't yeah, have, it, I, by the way, I bet if you, you have a Prime account where you ship shit to your house, that's you get now Prime your free video. video. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's well. The how many people are on line. Amazon Prime? Let me find out. What are the stats, dude? dude if Amazon you're one of the people that's not on you it, got Prime? I'm shocked. You have to. Yeah, what do you? Yeah, it's insane. My house is like an Amazon warehouse. The fact, <laughs> literally, like two hundred million Amazon Prime members. And all those people are gonna watch my special. Isn't that crazy? They better, dude. They yeah. better. I love Amazon Prime. Like the fact that I want to, like, I want an air fryer. It shows up tomorrow. Amazing. Yeah, it Amazing. is. It is a little scary how quickly I needed these high power magnets, like little. Uh, I was replacing something and I needed high power magnets, and I literally ordered it in the morning, being like, "I'll get to it tomorrow." And it got to my house that that yeah. afternoon. It makes other shipping look horrendous. Yeah. You're like five to seven business days. I'm like, "What is this, Lucy? What, what are, you are business? Are days? you relapsing? <laughs> Where are you?" Like, dude, I've saw I've seen an Amazon truck at 10 p.m. Like, they, when have you seen a UPS truck past 3 p.m.? Doesn't exist. They're out yeah. there working, uh -huh. hustling and busting on that Bezos buck. On that Bezos, Bezos buck. Bezos just moved to Miami. Did he really? Yeah, him and Messi running it up. How much did Messi get to go to Miami? What was dude, that? Something crazy, but I just found this out. God bless him. He By got the way, a lot when of, you're done over there, it's nice to come over here and cash I think it was out. 150 mil or something, but F 60 or, million a year. Jesus but but he it. gets uh, equity in the team. Right. What, they gave him a piece of it, which is like so much bigger than people realize. This is like a billion dollar deal, essentially. Good for that. Uh, dude. Messi er, reached 1.6 with. That's his career earnings with a Miami MLS deal. That's kind of cool, though, that you can kind of like say goodnight over there, gracefully come over here and make some coin. I mean, what's his yeah. name was the first one to do that, right? Beckham was the first guy to come over yes. here and make some coin. And then went back. And then made a movie, Bennett like Beckham. Is that him? That's not him. Nah. No, that's Amanda Bynes. Spitballing. I don't know who that is. I actually. saw Amanda I'm Bynes. One, I don't know. It sounds, I saw Amanda Bynes in Toronto one time. She had a face tattoo. It's a heart right here. I know. She got. She slipped away a little bit, but I think she got sober, right? And she came back. I think she got it all together again. I mean, she was like a, one of those childhood Disney stars who kind of had like an infinite amount of growth and room to become like, you know. A, 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 yeah, a movie so star much the or whatever. Amanda show. I mean, holy shit. This just shows you sometimes the uh, uh, sometimes fucking Hollywood will get you. Don't 
Don't uh, don't let it get you, baby. Uh, I'm not. Don't take that extra meeting. Hey, I've been here. Oh, what's that mean? They'll the, they'll say they go, Trevor. There's an extra meeting. Don't oh, go to an extra meeting. Is that how you sell your soul to the devil? I'm not gonna talk about it right now. Have here, you done dude. it? Was it easy process? Do you need paperwork? Imagine if I just started levitating <laughs> right now. <laughs> believe it was like Doja Cat sold her soul to the devil. I'm like, how does that? How does it that is work? funny. There Who are people that genuinely believe that there is a room in Hollywood as a thing that happens. That is a. <laughs> it's like in Encino. I kind of like you, it. You started uh, laughing. What happened? Do you yeah. know about it? No, 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 dude. We'll be right back after the sponsor <laughs> from Satan. Uh, promo code six six six. Yeah, I do like that. Like they sold the soul to the devil. It's like I would love. To, where is it? I'll yeah. sign up. Sounds cool. What do you mean? I would love to do that. <laughs> Look, it's 2023. Can I have a three-month trial? Um, yeah, let me How get in and get work? out. This is Spotify, baby. Let me get that premium. It's a subscription service to sell your soul to the devil? Yeah, check it out real quick. I, I mean, who? Robert Johnson? He's the first guy that sold his soul to the devil? That's what they say. He sold his soul to the What's devil. What's the song, The Devil Went Down to Georgia? Is that him? No, 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 no. no. Different song? Charlie, that was Charlie Daniels. You knew that quick. But Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil, apparently, and uh, and could play guitar better than anybody else. But prior to selling his soul, could never play a lick. Sold his soul and became one of the great, greatest guitarists of all time. So they say. You know so who else he... is like that? John Mayer. John Mayer didn't know how to play the guitar. Sold his soul to the devil. Oh. Now he's opening up fucking, he's doing Dead & Company. There's a lot of guys I can name like this that sold their soul to the devil that didn't have any talent before. Any, any of your uh, comic friends you know that sold Hell soul? yeah, dude. Yeah. So many. Theo. Oh, Theo. I think he might be an investor. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's, he's got rights down there. He's from Brazil. Like yeah. all the Southern thing that he does, it's such a good... It's <laughs> southern act. Brazil, yeah. Yeah, it's all a bit. I mean, there's a lot of guys that have done it. Um, but And Picture I can't wait Theo for it to happen to you. Theo is the funniest thing ever. Been like, Theo, you know, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nego Theo I negotiating a guy from hell. <laughs> with the devil. Yeah, dude. I mean, give me fucking three to five, and I'll try, dude. You know, it's a little warm, but make it work, dude. I once knew a guy who was born in an air fryer, so this ain't <laughs> too weird for me. I love Theo. That guy's the. He's I one of the him. greatest, dude. He's genuinely one of the greatest. Not just comics, but people. Great, I love him. His rise is uh, his rise is appropriate, as is yours. Is, genuinely, are you and Theo I mean like kind of the same? Thank you, man. Are you and Theo in the same like kind of class, LA class? We say. Yeah, kind of, a little bit. I mean, not really. When did? Uh, yeah, who are some of the guys in your class? And I mean, like and Fahim I, Anwar is my oldest friend in comedy. Yeah, he's, I would so say he's my funny, literal man. class. Me, him, Rick Glassman, kind of all uh, were brewing at the same time. Yeah. Me, him, Rick Glassman, Brent Morin. That was kind of oh. my class of yeah, guy, yeah. so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of my class was New York guys that I met. You know, like the De Stefanos uh, and Sam Morell and uh, and Norman and. We had all met at we, like festivals and all that stuff. So as we all started to grow in our own cities. It was cool to like watch That's awesome, them get, get up and me Did get you, up. Were you doing stand-up in Chicago or just New York? No, I started out here. Oh. This was my first my first stand-up spot was here. In fact, I told that to the improv last night at the party. Oh, nice. The improv was the first club that passed me. Really? First club that passed me. In fact, you know what's so fucking crazy? The guy, the interviewer said that. He goes, oh, that's fucking cool. And I said, you know what's insane? I bet you, and I, I still have the email. Have a, oh, really? I have the email from... Was uh, it Rita or somebody else? No, Eric Abrams at the time was booking it. Yeah. And I have it right here. Look at this. 1016, which is my birthday. You know how crazy that is? On my birthday, 2009. Oh, wow. I still have the email. Hey, please see your set time down below. Uh, what's the lineup on that? Uh, this is kind of great. I think I read this one other time. So I was October 24th, 1130. It was a show at, back then at the improv called Chunks and Punks. And, and $10, I don't know if we got paid $10 or that was the ticket price was $10. Yeah, both, yeah. But it says 10 bucks on it. It was a guy named Will C who hosted it. Uh, then me, I had my first spot. Ten minutes. Ooh, I was first out the spot. gate. Top. Right, right. Yeah, but at eleven thirty, that's not bad. They're already boozed up. Eleven thirty eight. Yeah, it's actually true. Saturday late show. Then oh, it was nice. Tony Vin, Sean Kelly, Alex Moore, Chris Neff, and then the two names you'll probably recognize: Ryan Sickler and Darren Carter. Yeah, Ryan Sickler yeah, and yeah. Darren Carter got the late late spot. That twelve twenty eight and twelve thirty eight. Now one would say, you know, those guys were the were getting better spots, but also that late, that's tough. Yeah. But look at this. I did the pay breakdown. Uh, this is really funny. They send you a, uh, they sent me a PDF Concept. saying, yeah, the hosts are going to get $35. Check this out. 10 to 14 minutes set, Sunday through Thursday, get $7.50. Literally a gallon of gas. <laughs> that's crazy. $7.50. 15 minutes sets a Monday through Thursday, uh, booked headliner gets $15. What? And if you got a Friday and Saturday, you get $25 check. Yeah, it's crazy. Here's my favorite, too. This is really great. Uh, comic paychecks for performances at the Hollywood Improv may be used as cash at the front bar. Hey! <laughs> you were allowed to use your You got your the damn buster bucks right there? That's what it was, The funniest dude. is, and, and I think this God, is... that's uh, fucking wild. Yeah. Flappers used to make you sign a contract that you were getting zero dollars. 
They used to make you sign a paper and be like, hey, just let you know this is a free spot, but sign here. Wait, like, really? Yeah, yeah. Zero dollars. Like if you're headlining, it's a different, but like, it used to be like if you were doing like a five minute set on like, you know how they book like 20 comics on it? Yeah. They'd be like, here, okay, you want to do this date? Here, sign this to say you're in. And it was like a contract. And it'd be like, amount paid, zero. And you would sign it. That's so That's fucking hilarious. Neat. That's so rude. Well, there's a bar here in the Valley called Residuals. Uh, and uh, if you could bring a check of zero dollars and a residual check for zero dollars zero cents, you get a free drink. And they used to staple it to oh, the ceiling. All, all your, uh, I don't know if it's still there. Or, are they still doing it? I don't know if they're still doing that. But you used to be able Hollywood to give them shit. a residual check, and if it was zero zero, that's really funny. You get uh, you get some booze, and they would keep. They used to keep the checks back in the day. Do you get some from old ass shit like maybe like punked or something that's like point you know three cents? Yeah, I, the, the the funniest check I get is is about two cents every six months. For a show called uh, uh, Code Nine, it was a hidden camera Disney show. I got hired. Uh, hidden camera on Disney. Yeah, that like sounds a, a little illegal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm your real dad. <laughs> it was nuts. It was uh, no shit. Code Nine. And when you get those, I mean, are you cashing a, a three cent? Oh, it's on Prime. It's on Prime. You I love the show. Right by you the watch way. Pterodactyl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you get? Are you cashing that check? No, it's a direct deposit into uh, a into okay, like a okay. it, into a. Because I got a check recently for ten dollars, and I That's just like I don't have it in me to cash it, and I'm how, not even like how spilling much is out it? money ten dollars. But why like, don't you just direct deposit it from the they direct deposit for you? Now. This is this isn't residual. This is for a show. Oh, oh, oh for something you did. Oh, this for is a stand up stand up show. Oh yeah, goes, here you go, man. Like to to pull out my Chase app and find the right background. You could to do get it. it. I up. promise you can do it. God, but I don't want to. Would well, you have a producer or a guy that does the podcast with you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, make him do it then. Yeah, true. That's him. I make him do all sorts of crazy shit. Yeah, he doesn't have a top of his head. What is this here? Uh, this is Code 9 on Disney. Yeah, I go down. Yeah, my good buddy Mark Herwick. Golf and gas. I think the... Yeah, Snow Globe Surprise. That's the one Was I get Was this before or after punk uh, Almost simultaneously. Oh, really? No, did no, no. Sorry, right after. punk I did... 10 or 11? I don't remember what year it was. <laughs> yeah, dude, we watched that on Flagrant recently. Me and Michael, we were watching one with like you and Blower in the same episode. Yeah. It's crazy to yeah, look at. Yeah, he got it's flown a... off from New York. I remember they're like, we're bringing in this kid from New York. Well, I remember he said he moved to LA after that. And he was like, that was like the show. And everyone in LA is like, dude, this guy's on fucking, or he was in New York at the time, I think. Yeah, he was. Like, yeah, he moved like, to LA. Yeah, they were yeah. like, dude, this guy's this is big. This is like a big thing. And it was like, a big deal to move oh, it's out massive. here. For that. There was no social media. Like, punked was the thing. Yeah, it was funny. So I, so I, uh, that check I get three cents legitimately every six or seven months because they play it on I, a Disney. I'm a prime, Disney. baby. Those are my people paying your bills. Thank you. So, honestly, so I want to say thank talk you. To me. I want to say thank you so much, man. And I hope people keep. I hope Prime keeps paying your bills. I hope they give you ten more specials and you explode and you get so big that we just don't talk. Yeah. I hope you get so big that we just don't talk. Please. I want to take up three spots in your guys' lot. I'm gonna park just parallel <laughs> and vertically at the same time. I don't know how to do that. I'm just gonna. Be, pfft, God bless, dude. I hope they do. Your favorite dinosaur of all time? Pterodactyl. Go watch Pterodactyl right now. Start to spell with a P. On Amazon. Uh, and if you don't know how to spell pterodactyl, Trevor Wallace is an easier way to get there. Yeah, the guys on Are You Garbage, both of them thought it started with a T. So yeah, have you met Kinda those guys? Up. Those are those are those are middle school dropouts. Uh, shout out to Are You Garbage. Uh, probably some of two of the funniest you, dudes I know. All right, big dog. We end the episode the same way. I love you. I really do appreciate you. You're a great dude, a very funny comedian. Thank you. Um, and a sexy, sexy cat. Thank you, dude. And uh, I wish continued success as I see you as we go on because you you are genuinely one of the good ones. Um, we end the episode the same way. You look in that camera right there. Uh, you end the episode with one word or one phrase, and I'll say something before you say that. Please go watch Pterodactyl on Amazon. Support the comics so we can keep doing this thing. Uh, one word or one phrase into that camera whenever you're ready. Badussie. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me five dollars for the whiskey and seventy-five dollars for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger, I like gingers.